They say when you wear Black Power Media gear, you can accomplish anything. You can play any and every position. Coaching, to kicking, to receiving, to running and juking. And, oh, my goodness. Let's see how to get in slow motion. Get off me. Ah. And you're going to have a lot of haters coming at you. But what you got to do is you got to shake them off. Shake them off and get to your goal and accomplish it. And when that's done, it's a beautiful thing. I'm talking about going hard, extra, for that extra point. And when it's done beautifully, you're talking about touchdown. Oh, and the crowd goes wild and they're celebrating with you and everything. Man, let's see that again. Nice. Black Power Media, baby. That's how we do it. Now go to blackpowermedia.org and get you some of that gear. Power yourself today. Yep. You got to earn your liberation. <laughs> What's up, fellas? Welcome, everybody. Good Friday morning here at Black Power Media. Earn your liberation. Diallo Kenyatta, Geechee Yaw. I'm Jared Ball, co-hosting. Welcome to everybody joining us. What's up, fellas? How you feeling this morning? Good Friday to you. Morning, morning, Mer- morning. I'm I'm listening. I'm I'm listening to this uh the secular prophet that we bought the uh his his ministry just started off. Um, we gonna donate to his church fund. Oh but, uh, Lord, the secular prophet. What does that mean? Yeah. Listen, man, I, I just use a uh, historical precedent <laughs> and evidence to determine the trajectory of, of, of society and thus predict the future. All right. For, for the, for the free though, he asks for your money though. He don't ask for no money. I have, I have not uh, figured out how to monetize secular <laughs> prophecies yet. I'm oh, working wow. on it. <laughs> I feel like I missed something. Did I miss a meeting? What happened? Yeah. I told you I got saved. Look. <laughs> I got saved, brothers. <laughs> oh my goodness! What, what's going? Right. What's going? What's, what's going in your tree line streets, Jared? Can you breathe? Yeah, uh, we still under the warning, uh, mm-hmm. but uh, um, it is. It, I mean, it's it's relative. I, I don't know. It's not as bad as I guess up north, in mm-hmm. down here in in Maryland. Yeah. Uh, but um, it was it was noticeable certainly yesterday. Uh, today feels a little bit better, and it's usually not as noticeable early in the morning. I think that crisp air, kind of the cool air, gives an illusion of cleanliness at least. I prophesized but, that. Oh, did you? Yes, I did. Man-made <laughs> apocalypse. Mm. Yes, I did. I prophesied. I told y'all that this system was destroying the life-sustaining capacity of the planet Earth. I told the people that the planet mm. is a fishbowl, so it ain't no such thing as throwing something away. The planet is a closed, dirty locked asshole. ecosystem. And I, I've been telling mm. y'all to, to, to get off the swine and, and to fight uh, industrial capitalism for the last couple of decades. But y'all don't hear me though. Oh, what's up, Nelson? Five A at West Coast in it, or or wherever West Coast equivalent time zone. Appreciate you. Yeah, five five. Skip got to you, Diallo. Is that what's happening? What's up, James? No, I got happened? to him. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Skip is the. I have to say, I love that brother, but he's the worst Christian in the world. <laughs> and now in that Pat way? Robinson's gone, I. I mean, he just is a bad. He's a he's an insightful. He's thoughtful. He's reasonable. He's not reactionary. You know, I wished him a happy Abomination Month, and he said that he doesn't see that that the LGBTQs as abomination. I, I saw him, that uh, part. He, he saw- doesn't beat his children. He he, he spares the rod. Well, so so I'm wait, like, man. So you really bad at Christianity? And- and the best part of the show was when he referred to 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 the stances I took, as as he as he put it, you know, when right is he said, what did he say, right is right. When you were claiming we were ganging up on you, and he was just right. like, right is right. right. That was the best so, part of the show, you know. So don't don't, don't tell me you one of those people you one of those people who misquote mis quote spare the rod spoil a child too. You be you be doing uh, that too. Oh, you trying to say like the rod is oh, something Lord. for guidance? Oh, you're Lord. trying to say that the rod is something to guide. 
Well, well, no, well I'm just, I'm just, I'm just asking because I ain't never read that. I ain't never read that people be beating their children with rods and shit for real. But well, I mean, we've modernized. It wasn't no, it wasn't no flip flops oh, okay. in the biblical era. So you know they use what was uh, available. <laughs> so um, yeah, I mean the oh, Bible okay. tells you you can kill your children, but you want to tell me that it, 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 it that we misinterpreted? Do we misinterpret the part? Where we we we're allowed that the Bible allows people to, to to literally expire their children for disobedience. Did we miss the part where the children mock the prophet for his baldness and and God, you know, possessed a bear and had the bear attack and kill and murder the children? I don't know. We missed the part where Moses sure was that. allowed to, Not- to to kill all the the children and and kill all the the women except for the women who had not yet reached puberty age and take them as wives. But we, we misinterpreted gonna, we gonna, we, the rod part. We No, I mean, you probably misinterpreted the rod part, but we're going to bring uh, Diallo, Diallo, Skip, and, um, and Jackie on for a Bible study one day. We're going to have a... a oh, Lord. <laughs> I would love to see Bible that. Study. I would tune in for that. I would even, I would even, I would even, yeah, I would love to be around for that. A, a Jackie and, and Diallo discussion of, of the Lord, the Lord. Yeah, we gonna. But, but I, you know, the one, the one question I don't, I, I didn't get to catch everything, but I, I would have liked to see you, you follow up with, with Skip on that part, because I am interested always in how Christians both do and do not um, interpret that passage about uh, homosexuality and shelled fish and, um, uh, you know, this became, this, yeah, anyway. Uh, well, they hide behind Jesus' new covenant. Oh, I see. They were like, that's Old Testament. But you can't hide behind because the covenant was just about salvation. The new covenant did not incorporate all of the other dogmatic rules and limitations. So, uh, divorce, uh, um, the 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 men, the hierarchies, and and the only thing uh, Jesus changed from the Old Testament was blood sacrifices and blood offerings and burnt offerings. Everything else from the Old but, Testament still applies. But Emma, what if you don't know your about, Bible? Huh? You don't know Emma doesn't Emma doesn't know her, Emma. Do you not know your Bible? So, so, don't so worry. Diallo, what Come, about hell gonna what, be Liddy? Hell gonna be Liddy. So what, what about the people who claim to not be under the covenant and they're supposed to be under Paul's dispensation, which is Romans through Philemon, and they don't even talk about a covenant? So I think from what, what I've learned, people Ooh. supposed to rightly divide. So now rightly, that's when... supposed, let me finish. Let me finish. People supposed to rightly divide the Bible, and then there's three three different contexts. So there's a historical context, which we can argue there's a lot of inaccuracies. There's a moral context, and then there's a doctrinal context, no. and there's different messages that have different people in different times. So, for instance, when they say, uh, when Peter writes to the 12 tribes of Israel, and the letter ain't coming to you, you probably shouldn't take the words little, word for word. You're only going to learn from oh. it morally. So, I'm, so. I'm, man, I'm, I'm just, I, I just said a little prayer for your soul. The Bible is the unadulterated word of God, divinely inspired. In errant, they say word of God. So in errant is pure <laughs> blasphemy. That's what the Bible said. The, the, the Bible said it itself. So I mean, I, I'm not me. I'm talking about what the Bible said. Listen, listen. I don't lean not you know. to thine own understanding. Uh, hey, that's what the Bible said too. <laughs> the Bible also said easy lion. Drink, Exodus 21 drink. say we all need to know as black people about the Bible, the rules and bylaws of slavery. <laughs> that too. Like I said, man, most Christians are not as good as Christianity as they think. Or as I like to say, everybody love Christianity until some Christian shit happens. All right, well, man, take I'm, it, a, I'm take a believer. It, take, hold take hold on. Connection. I'm a believer. In, I'm, yeah, well, I'm a believer in taking it to the text. So let's <laughs> let's let's check on 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 ZZ Lion. Uh, Hebrew 21. These are the laws you are to set before them. Hebrew servants. If you buy a Hebrew servant, he is to serve you for six years. But in the seventh year, he shall go free without paying anything. If he comes alone, he is to go free alone. But if he has a wife, when he comes, she is to go with him. 
If his master gives him a wife and she bears him sons or daughters, the woman and her children shall belong to her master and only the man shall go free. But if the servant declares, I love my master and my wife and children do not want to go free, then this master must take him before the judges. He shall take him to the door or the doorpost and pierce his ear with an awl. Then he will be his servant for life. Yes. But that's but 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 the key word here is if you buy a Hebrew servant. So I don't know if these rules apply to the non-Hebrews. No, it's, it's I'm almost it's certain it does yeah. yeah. How could it? How could it? But but, I, you know, let's take it to the test. Now, as 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 but my just atheist to serve your master as you serve God. All right. And, but as my my atheist uh, 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 YouTube's channels uh, have been teaching me and reminding us. <laughs> um First of all, we don't even know what language. We don't even have the right translations. That's yes, we do. Strong, that's yes, why you need a strong the, coordinates. Listen, God has, through the centuries and decades, guided mm. man and divinely inspired man. So the Bible mm. has and not look, been corrupted. And look, so, we, so all now, of losing now, money. All we, of the generations money. have been now, we're losing money inspired. now. Now go watch to, to, Rabbi to, Tovia it, Singer. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, no, no. Go watch Rabbi Tovia Singer, who who will tell you, Christ. who will tell you that if you don't read Hebrew, then you have been tricked by the New Testament and all of its oh. uh, blasphemous translations and false claims and. And uh, of course, uh, uh, a Christ uh, killer uh, disturbing the original text. Of course, a, a rabbi, a Christ killer. Yeah, a Christ. Of killer. course, they, they would say that they since the day they killed the Lord and Savior. But as, of as Rabbi Singer they reminds us, putting salt Jesus in the Christian was just day. Jesus was just another fake running around here claiming he wasn't no Messiah because the Hebrew Bible says the Messiah will do certain things and Jesus didn't do none of them. Not one of them, so I don't know. When, but when I said none when of I them said, talk about Kemet, skipping, and none of them talk said, about the Merunetter, so I don't. I think all of their the, all of their approaches are flawed. Heathenism, and they, what they yeah. did yeah. talk about it. They said Listen, heathen. They, thank they you. Said whenever I said, yeah, we need to make up said, Ricky's skip. lost money. <laughs> Divinely inspired with a no, we we really do because when I said Skip and Jackie, he was going to lead a Bible study. I did not mm. encourage y'all to. Atheist to try to <laughs> teach the Bible today. Now we now we gotta get our collection plate and move on. <laughs> like, we don't we don't mm. fuck no, no son well, of speed. <laughs> Pat Robinson has died. The Christian community has lost a great great leader. The 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 the, the Christian evangelical community. But you know, I, I I'm confused that, by that's black his name, people. Pat Roberts or Pat Robinson. Pat, Pat Rab Robertson. Robertson. You, oh, you young. I keep forgetting how young. All right. You, <laughs> you don't I remember mean, the Seven Hundred Club. I just remember the. Yeah, you I don't remember the Seven Hundred Club. Even even the heathens knew about oh, yeah. the Seven Hundred oh, Club. I remember him. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> what what confused me? I, I know me. all of the preacher, the, the teacher preacher, the TV preachers. Maybe somebody can explain to me. How Pat Robinson's death is a win for 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 the progressive community or or leftist community in general or the black community specific, because I see black people celebrating this man's death as if it's just like the Queen. Pat Robinson died at ninety four years old with over a hundred million dollars of net worth. So he won, and much huh? of that worth was <laughs> stolen Congolese <laughs> mineral resources. So. How are we winning when, when, when our oppressors, you know, my great grandmother used to send money to the 700 Club. Remember back in the day before the Internet, they used to send these uh, prepaid envelopes to our elders. And all over the hood, the 700 Club would send these prepaid envelopes with prayers in them. And sometimes with, with these prayer cards and you write your prayer. And you put your cash, check, or money order in with the prayer that you want the 700 and mail it back. And my great-grandmother, bless her heart, would do this 
routinely. And that's why I have hated that man's guts all my life. He was getting money from the streets, from the hood, and from the Congo mm. after saying that hate, the Haitian re rebellion was inspired by Satan and blessed by Satan. And the reason why Haiti is so impoverished is because they made a deal with the devil and a deal with Satan to secure their freedom from the French colonials. So, but I don't understand. I, I just would like to ask the hood to stop celebrating our colonizers, oppressors, our enemies dying with opulent wealth at very old ages. That is nothing to celebrate. The memes and all that shit, they fall flat. They fall flat. If our only weapon against our enemies is their old age, <laughs> uh, uh, we're not doing this thing wrong. I hear you. It's 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 difficult to get excited in a, in a in a sense of claiming victory over these deaths. I'm with you on that. Crazy. Uh, um, at least they're not. But 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 I guess yeah. I guess well, it's a poor standard. But at least they're not lamenting his loss. Oh, I ain't ran into a Negro yet, but I'm pretty sure they out there. That would be, yeah. All right. Well, I'm pretty sure they out there. I'm sure check on your aunties, uncles, and grands, because I'm sure they out there. Because I know for a fact that there are a lot of reactionary black people who call themselves revolutionary, who call themselves conscious, who were sharing links from the CBN, the Christian Broadcast ne Network, because a lot of their articles aligned with re reactionary points of view. So mm -hmm. I know many a times I would go to dudes like, man, you you're sharing links from the CBN website or are you, you, you are advancing articles or quote unquote research from CBN because CBN along with exploiting, supporting racism, and colonialism, it also was very strong on family values and putting the father at the head of the household. So there are a lot of reactionaries out there like Dr. Umar who have ideologies and viewpoints and agendas that are consistent and aligned with the, the uh, Pat Robertson and the CBN from fighting the homosexual agenda to, to women should be chaste and submissive uh, um, um, help meets to and putting the father strong family values. So you'll find a lot of Pat's Roberts viewpoints articulated and perpetuated through the community by some of our most conscious and so quote unquote revolutionary leaders. So I know the, the Umar reference is, is in part uh, pointing to our run sheet this morning. So we're going to come back to that in a second, but if I can, I, I, if you all would forgive me, I would like to make a, take two minutes to quickly correct something from the other day's remix morning show that is somewhat related to, to the financial discussions we're going to get into today. I just wanted to clarify something that I, I forgot to do this yesterday, but I, I I wanted to clarify something that I don't think I was very clear on uh, the other day when this came up in terms of uh, the, the recent efforts of the Securities Exchange Commission to regulate crypto uh, and Coinbase and, 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 um, uh, um, Binance uh, exchanges in particular. Um, and this question over commodities versus... Uh, tell tell, tell yeah, Leah, it's all, there's always a run sheet. We just got Diallo and Jared on the show. Oh, there's always a run sheet. There's always a run sheet. We stay, <laughs> we stay organized around here. I go where I the know. spirit leads me. That's what that's that's what the run sheet says. If the spirit says, "Hey, brother, you got to depart from the sea," if there's a message on my heart that y'all didn't write down ahead of time, I'm supposed to just ignore it. No, we we understood. Like we didn't say the run sheet is is followed. <laughs> it's gospel. <laughs> there's only one gospel, and it ain't your run sheet. <laughs> he said, "I I work from God's run sheet." I can see how people get into that shit. It, it, yeah. it, it feels good. And I'm telling you, when, when I told you when we went to church a couple weeks ago, it felt good. Even as I was in there, one part of my brain was like, this is nonsense. Another part of my brain was like, let it wash over yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. It's to come. It's empowering. Give in. <laughs> so empowering. Gosh, just shut your cognitive brain off and let your heart take over. Yes. Man. It's a good feeling. I can't front. 
uh, but just quickly, just quickly, because uh, I think the, the, I, I didn't help clarify this. And I just want to I don't want the platform to suffer. Just 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 so. So just a quick cl uh, clarification, the, the difference between securities and commodities and who regulates them. So it says it says here, uh, you likely know that what securities and commodities are, even if you use different names for them. Investors purchase stock bond, stocks, bonds, debt and other interests in companies, governments or private businesses. These kinds of investments are securities. At the same time, businesses purchase natural resources like oil, gas, and coal, as well as agricultural products like coffee, corn, sugar, and wheat well in advance of delivery. These are examples of commodities. And so that is so so part of the argument around crypto is and, and going back to that Reggie Middleton debate, Geechee, this is I think what he was pointing to. He didn't want, he didn't like that I kept calling. Uh, uh, cryptocurrency because and he kept remember if you remember Geechee, he kept trying to run that whole thing do you know what it, do you you don't know what it is do you understand what a currency is a token and is and what he was really trying to, I think get around was this he was trying to pre figure this coming c concern and and by not having it defined as currency by not having it defined as a security he was hoping that they could avoid what is happening now where the Securities Exchange Commission comes in to regulate uh, because it is a more well-funded and, and more powerful entity as opposed to, the to uh, as I've highlighted here, the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, which regulates commodities, but is understood to be less well-funded, less empowered, and less likely to catch hustles. So just quickly here, there's another major difference between the two securities and commodities operate under different laws and are regulated by different agencies. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, regulates securities under the Securities Act of 1933. The Commodity Futures Trading Commission regulates commodity markets under the Commodity Exchange Act of 1936. Securities and commodities are governed by different statutes, regulated by different agencies and operate in different markets. This difference affects buyers sellers and investors it can also make a difference that you need an attorney so that's i just wanted to to quickly come back to that because i don't think i helped the other day when we when this came up on the remix and i and and that was that but i do think it is in some way related to 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 some of the things we're going to get into this morning so anyway yeah, i think i think yeah. Re reggie reggie kept thinking that he could finesse his way to political power but also kept admitting that people with actual political power were stopping him from doing all the things that he was claiming that he could be doing. Um, but I think since y'all talk about the Lord Jesus Christ and trying to save souls today, it makes right sense to go to one of our saviors. We got two saviors coming up, chat. So we got John Hope Franklin. No, not Franklin. John Hope Bryant. John Hope Bryant. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> John Hope Bryant. And then also... Um, <laughs> And also um, Tyler Perry. So which one of them saviors we want to um, acknowledge and, and worship right now first? Who who was who since since Diallo brought his name up, who was who was Umar talking about in his video? Well, Umar was talking Not about being uh, talk. He was talking about um, Cornell West running for office and he needed. He oh, that's right. Black that's right. He's going to do the multiple. By the way, Cornell gender. West. Back on BPM next Wednesday, 2 p.m. Eastern, uh, he's going to sit down with me, Kal Kalanji, and Kamal, as was done the first time he joined us, and we're going to get into those things. So, so come on back for that. But okay, um, oh, I thought, I, my bad, I forgot. I thought he was saying something about something else. But anyway, yeah. What you, what do you all want to get to? I don't, you know. I, I mean, he said a bunch of stuff. He talked about uh, Asian Asian hate and the Asian bill right, crime. Well, I, I got it here. I got it here. Let's see. I'll pull up the, the Umar joint, and we can start there then. Um, but here we go. And, 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 and Dr. Umar, if you're tuning in, Check us out Wednesday, and and because I know you you got a couple words for you, for your man Cornell. Let's see let's see how he responds to to some of what what might come up in our conversation that you bring up here. Now, I'm also concerned, Doctor Cornell West. I'm also concerned, Doctor King Jr. As to whether or not you're going to focus on Black people's issues. Or are you going to be a multiculturalist? 
because if Cornell West is going to be a multicultural presidential candidate, that will hurt Black America. That will hurt Black America. That will hurt Black America. So all due respect to Dr. Cornell West, who I respect, dear elder, dear elder Dr. Cornell West, if you are going to be a multiculturalist during your presidential campaign, you will hurt Black America because you will help the Democrats and Republicans take the attention away from Black people. We already have enough attention being taken oh away God, from you know. issues that affect Black people. <laughs> so for all of you who are friends with Dr. Cornell West, can you please find out whether or not he's Jared, going to be partial We're going to ask to Black him Wednesday. As, please well, don't do that. Don't ask him. I'm going to play him this presidential clip. Candidate. Presidential candidate. I'm going to play him this clip. If he's going to be a multiculturalist, we do not need him to run. Cornell West, please oh don't hurt your people. Don't hurt your people. Do not run for president if you are going to be a multiculturalist. Mm. Dr. Cornell West has a snow bunny? What? Are you sure? Can somebody confirm the allegation? Is that, that Dr. true? Cornell I didn't even West watch this far in the video. Is married to a bunny? He's I, got, oh I never heard that. Oh Can that goodness. be confirmed? Oh my goodness. Can that be confirmed? Can somebody confirm Can if Dr. Confirm Cornell it? West is married to a snow bunny? Can that be confirmed? Leah says she's Palestinian. Can somebody please confirm? Text me a picture. Hey, but I've been in the room where people have talked about Nkrumah to my cell phone. And 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 text and me a picture. Sister Nasser of him and his wife oh to my God. cell phone. 215-989. Nine eight five eight oh, two one five nine eight nine. Damn! Shut, shut, nine eight five. Eight. Text me a yeah. text. I didn't hear he had a snow bunny. He put his Arabs phone number out are back still when he was... because Arabs Wait. are Caucasian See? for purposes See? of the U.S. Census. See? In the United States of America, Arabs are Caucasians. So if she is Arab, she you. is snow bunny. Can I somebody told you. confirm? Can somebody confirm? Can somebody confirm? Let's move on. Now, I'm also. Yeah. Shit, I thought we should move on when he started. Hey, me. Rabs. But yeah, that dude is a problem. Um, You damn right, Troy. We're going to sit there and watch the whole thing with Dr. <laughs> West. And I'm going to get the extended clip. I'm going to get the extended clip, not just the IG joint. We're going to get the whole we going to make him sit there and listen to the whole thing. Now what you got to say, Dr. West, you going to be a multiculturalist? You going to be a multiculturalist? <laughs> With your snow bunny? You bring in the snow bunny? Anyway. Go ahead. I mean, so I look, I I I So 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 my thing is my initial reaction, in all seriousness, whatever seriousness I would bring to a response to this is, this is sort of my point about the, the. so what, what, and I don't know enough about what, what Umar Johnson's argument is or those in his, in, in his uh, uh, lane, but what then would the argument be for engaging electoral politics? Because I know a lot, uh, hold, hold on Diallo, give me one second, give me one second, because I know a lot of African-centered folks prevaricate and put on the show and went and vote for the Democrat, Obama, Biden, maybe Sanders at one point. Uh, but 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 if the if the argument is a critique about engaging other groups in electoral politics, then it's it's uh, uh, it's it's fraudulent is the word I want to say, but maybe that's too harsh. It's disingenuous because obviously if the game is electoral politics, you're going to have to vote and work with and engage other communities. So uh, uh, it, after that point is understood, what then is, is Umar advocating? Is he advocating uh, an after-party style approach where we at least get our platform together and engage on that basis? Why are you asking? You you listen I'm, to the man. You're asking these questions. Putting You heard what he said. Attention. In this clip. To this, Umar been talking about politics that I've been hearing Umar... Every four years, 
every U.S. election cycle, these politically, let me say, politically reactionary individuals come out and dance around the periphery of every election cycle, spewing utter nonsense in order to, I think Umar was very honest. He said, don't take away attention from black people. And Umar, as the self-appointed, you know, spokesperson, embodiment of blackness, prince of self-crowned, prince of pan-Africanism, is like, there's a black pan -handling. Attention away, prince of pan -handling. taking attention away from me. You notice how they talk about black, it just happened here with the, with the city council, where many black reactionary politicians were upset that $50 million, $51 million was being allocated to help um, to not even, fifty million dollar was allocated to immigrants here, and black politicians got up and said, "Black children, black community, black people, black children, black black the black black." That doesn't say anything on a political level. You notice they never talk about specific policies. So all like from from Ice Cube to to P Diddy to Umar. As the, the, the 2024 election cycle ramps up, they're all going to come out spewing nonsense, all these prominent black people. And, and, and every one of them is going to establish a little camp. But the main thing he said, the highlight is attention. They get attention. They want to raise their profiles because they know that the media is going to be supercharged. The, the public for, for every four years is reoriented to pay attention to politics and, and learn names of people they normally don't know. And the, the, the various factions of the white elites will anoint their particular handpicked representatives and all that shit. So here's the bottom line. Umar. Uh, just really doesn't want any other black prominent black person. You either have to get with Umar or figure out how to bring Umar in because Umar doesn't really stand for anything. Umar will be like, don't vote and stay out of it. And, or he'll come in and say, well, well, you just need a black agenda. What the hell is the black agenda? Even when they say, because I'm pretty sure he doesn't look at the platform of the Democrats. He didn't go look at the platform of the Republics or 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 this new party or 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 this faction that that uh, what's his name Cornell has aligned with. It's just it's just frustrating to me how prominent black or leading blacks throw these political tantrums instead of engaging in real political strategy and 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 really engaging in political education of the black masses so that we can properly manipulate, properly maneuver, properly extract from the political arena what we need and then move on. They just throw these political tantrums and it's all about attention. Yeah, I, I see him to be the one who like throw a bunch of shit around and hopefully some of it stick with black people. So whenever right. he throw the anti-Asian hate Black people love that as well. Or if he start talking about the school Wait. or whatever, so I just think he, he has it just didn't make any sense. Take attention away from black people. What does that even mean Listen. in the context of a a presidential election cycle? What does that mean? Well, I'm well, I'm I'm sure somebody resonate with that because when he's on the Breakfast Club, Charlemagne and Teslin and all of all of them will say, "Oh, we need a black agenda. We need a black agenda. What's the what's your goal for Black America?" So and that's another sure that's thing the, when they I say they stand yeah. up, no serious population ask for an agenda. If you're asking someone to have an agenda for you, you're literally subordinating yourself to that person or to that party. You don't go to anyone and ask for an agenda. You go to them with your no, I agenda. Thought Geechee, I thought Geechee was asking was saying that they were asking him what the agenda was. Is they not ask politicians, mm -hmm. what's your black agenda? What's the black agenda for the, the Democrats want our votes? What's the Democratic Party's agenda for black people? What is many of these, again, political reactionaries go out and request that the Democrats develop a black agenda. They go out and request that politicians have a black agenda or an agenda for black people. What are you going to do for black people when the proper 
way that that works is you bring them your agenda saying here is the black agenda. And the correct question is, what is your position on the agenda? But before you even present your agenda, you have to go to the their existing stated platform and say, well, this is their platform and this is our agenda. Their standing platform does not align with our agenda. So there's even no room for dialogue. We are opposition. Or if you can go to the uh, uh, agenda and say, well, there is some overlap and some common ground. So when you see the overlap and common ground between the black agenda and the DNC agenda or the black agenda and the Green Party agenda or any other libertarian party agenda and the black agenda, then that's when you go sit down at the table and say, this is our agenda. These are your vulnerabilities that we will act on. These are the way we can strengthen. We still engage politics like children throwing a tantrum. If you don't give me what I want, I'm going to hold my breath. Or if you don't give me what I want, you don't get my vote. They don't give a shit. When you remove yourself from the election cycle, you become moot. You become moot. Both of the political parties already factor in for a majority of, 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 of the, the, the electorate not voting. So you're playing in your hand when you say, I'm not going to vote. So I, there is a lot to be gained from in properly and intelligently engaging the U.S. political system, local elections, regional and national. One thing we will never get from the U.S. Uh, electoral system is liberation. It's never going to be on the ballot. Liberation must come from the top, from the bottom up. It must grow organically from our community. We cannot elect liberators. We must cultivate and rise up liberators and be liberators ourselves. But we can get competent policies. We can get certain resources and support, whether that is health care, related to health care, related to prioritizing education, whether it relates to infrastructure. None of the sexy shit like revolution, liberation, uprisings, that's never going to come from the political system. That comes against the political system. But again, there are many things that we are worthy of and that we can extract from the political system. But the way these Umars orient us and the way they direct us make sure guarantees that we get no benefits and nothing but liabilities from the larger political system because we don't proper properly mobilize and properly direct what relevant and significant political power we have as a black voting population i mean and it just i think frustrates the politi- me when they play with I, this i think uh, i think jar hope uh, tells us the political power comes from him being the federal reserves of black people and obviously him and Andy Young supporting Cop City down there with Dickens. So there's actually a video that I sent um, where you have John Hope D- Bryant, Andrew Dickens, no, I'm sorry, Andre Dickens and Andrew Young versus Kamal Franklin. So um, you, sh- you should play that clip. Yeah, but you got to sit, you got to organize these links, man. Where am I? Where is the link? I only sent one link. I just sent it. I just sent it in the chat. Oh, there's, there's a link. video in there. Yeah, okay, there's, there's a, a video, video in here. The, uh, okay. Uh, come out. I come out. Yeah. Come out talking. Hmm. And you see John Hope back there in the background with all of all of the the black elite of Atlanta. Let me get that. oh Wakanda. Yeah. The ongoing controversies surrounding the plan <laughs> yeah. for Atlanta Top City Police Training Facility. Well, Atlanta's Mayor Andre Dickens once again is insisting that the training center will be built at that site, the Cab County, and that's where we're going to begin. Here's the 11 Alive John Shirk with these new developments tonight. Outside Atlanta City Hall, a public show of support for Mayor Andre Dickens. Dozens of community leaders backing him and backing his controversial plans for the so-called Cop City Public Safety Training Center. The Atlanta Public Safety Training Center is moving forward because we need it. Kamal Franklin with Community Movement Builders. 
Dickens watched the event shaking his head. I think Mayor Dickens is running scared. And the fact that they have to call out basically the Atlanta where not one BPM piece of swag center speaks volumes of the fact that no one wants this center built. But Andrew Young told me after the rally that when he was Atlanta mayor back in the 1980s, he supported building Georgia 400 inside the perimeter despite popular opposition because it was the right thing to do. And that everyone agrees now the highway was and is needed. Same, he says, with the police training center and Atlanta's leaders now. You Negroes don't know what you need, what's best for you. And that he's means we're going to be cussed out and blamed until it works. Mayor Dickens defending in this public setting the private meeting of his new community task force on the project, saying that the task force members want to be shielded from controversy and threats. But they have put Kamal a token Franklin white. See John the Hope in the back there, Santa Barbara lady. Once and for all. Mm -hmm. At this stage, you know, I, I can. They all look alike. They're all blending together in one. They got John Hope. Decide whether or not this monstrosity. You're talking over Kamal, man. And then that will put this matter to bed. As it is, the mayor's task force on the project, which will report back to him in August, is only looking at some of the projects details not on whether or where it should be built the two main concerns of opponents who the mayor insists do not represent majority opinion at atlanta city hall john lord have mercy um yeah i mean so the, what all all that's on display there is pretty shameful i mean and this is why you know as kamal reminded us yesterday uh killer mike has said nothing about cop city uh this uh yes cause he's because because andy young is his boy and as we have pointed out for a minute here andy young ain't no dr king in fact is the antithesis of dr king and is is the false remnant of that history go ahead go ahead diallo um sometimes you can glean the meaning so like people i got people in the comments asking me all kind of shit about politics and family values as if i haven't been speaking and articulating my position for decades so if you really want to know, you, you can know. But we know Killer Mike's position, even if he doesn't say. Hold up, Diallo. Things. You didn't exist until the people in the chat found you. Don't right. forget that. Don't and forget this is the my rule first of the chat. Time, right. This is my first time ever speaking on politics and black family values and the black the chat reactionary. speaks us into existence right. like the Lord <laughs> himself. Right. <laughs> but. But the same goes with Killer Mike. We was like, what is Killer Mike? Killer Mike is aligned with the NRA. He is aligned with the, the, the black bourgeoisie, the black establishment. He is aligned and advocates for the status quo. So do we really need him? Because if he came out and said anything other than I support Cop City, we know he's a goddamn lie because his actions, his stated positions in the past have all been consistent with these type of actions. You know, it's all about infrastructure. And if you want black banks, you need black police force to guard them black banks. If you want black capitalism, you need a black armed uh, uh, force to protect the, the exploiter class, the, the exploited, exploiter class from the exploited classes. So you do need an armed working class faction to, arm, to, to attack and suppress the, the unarmed or the non-sanctioned armed factions so killer mike supports cop city so running around saying hey what is killer mike ain't said nothing he said enough we know where he stands like that's like saying you know uh what's dr umar's position on this particular person being with a snow bunny you ain't gotta go to each instance we know what his ideology and his position is killer mike is down with cop city and when he's called upon when 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 his white controllers wind that little dial on his back and give him his orders, he will come out and talk the shit, you know, or wrap it. Mm. So I think all uh, the rappers ain't John Hope Bryant always. John Hope Bryant rappers. always talks about um how he how he got it started in um the riots of uh. Uh, it was LA riots. Why am I blinking? Rodney King riots. But what he did was during the riots, he took a bunch of white bankers into the black neighborhoods and say, "See, you could you could go here." There's this bank tour that he took. Um, and so it's ironic that he claims to be anti-police in a way during Rodney King, but now he's with the uh, you know cop city and and his his best friend Andy Young because he's tight with Andy Young too. But uh, but also yeah, this we, idea we, of him being mm -hmm. the um, 
Federal Reserve. So. Yeah, I mean, it's like where did he say that? Where did he say that? I don't know if that was EYL. I think we, we have a link, but I don't know if that was EYL that he said it, but he pretty much in the interview, he said he wanted to be the Federal Reserve for the black community. Um, I'm pretty sure. It was and, where, and where and where did you put the, where's the link? For that one. Let me let me get the link because I thought I heard something. All right, hold on. But I didn't say the I know, but, but my point class, is, if you, real quick, real I, quick, real quick, real quick. If you send it in our group chat in WhatsApp, there's a whole bunch of stuff flowing through there, so it's hard to keep track of wherever. Send it to the is. private chat in the thing. Yeah, Put that's the thing what I would, in the yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, that's my. Th I didn't like, say the cops are the working class. I said cops and soldiers are extracted from the working class. They're extracted mm. from the working class. Bill Gates' son and Bill Gates' grandkids are never going to kick in your door. <laughs> you know, you know, Bill Gates, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, well, I guess you can't say all the time, but more likely than not, the offspring of the elites, you know, Blue Ivy is never going to join the military. <laughs> you know, so even though the, the soldiers and the cops don't qualify as working class, the tragedy is that they are extracted from the working class. So, um, which so it is a group of right, I found class it, versus other groups. So no, I didn't call the, the the cops working part of the working class. No, they're they're traitors. They're class traitors. So so in the past, and I'm 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 currently I'll, I'm going to post the video separately on the channel. But in the past, we've 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 uh, with Brother Kaba in a previous iteration of this show, we did a we did a uh, an extended look at, at Roland Martin and his relationship with John Hope Bryant and the and the financial advice segments that they that they were giving on their program. So I'll repost that and, and put the link uh, in the show description when it uh, to this show when it's up. If people want to revisit some more on on Bryant, because uh, he's qu quite a character, but. Um, uh, and filled, and just as you, just as you both, I think, said and alluded to, hope behind Bryant, behind the black face of Bryant, is a whole bunch of white owners, investors, banks, platforms. It's not so. This whole thing about uh, I'm I'm a black man that did did what all black people can do for black people is is part of the mythology. But but this is what we're talking about here. And when is this brand new? Hello, Geechee. I don't know I don't, when it came. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't know how old it is. I. I. I think it's a rather recent. Though. <laughs> it's as old as chattel slavery. Negro elite yeah. selling out the Federation. Mm. <laughs> Third of the hood. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna create a million black businesses. I've already told you about that. One MBB changed the culture and our mindset, in our neighborhoods, our communities, and our families from from where we are to. I mean, black folks are amazing. We've been doing so much with so little for so long. We can almost do anything with nothing. And so I think we have change our mindset so we know we can do anything and can role model that for future generations. That's for you. Become the Federal Reserve of the hood. <laughs> <laughs> look how he, look at We're it. Gonna create a million black. Oh, the attitude that I'm the Federal Reserve of the hood. So what, what, let, if we could just spend a moment with that, that analogy, what, what is he what is he so what he's suggesting by that analogy that he would become the federal reserve of the hood what he wants to convey and by following up with the Prevent claim of creating it. millions of businesses he, he wants to convey that some some uh what did you say Geechee? prevent the centralization of power and money i don't which he he's going to be the, it's going to be centered to him he will oh. have all the power and money well but but he no, wants to venture but he, capitalism but he wants, that's all it is but what he wants to convey to his audience is this idea that that by being the Federal Reserve of the hood, that he's going to be helpful to the hood, that he's going to create business and an economy and wealth for the hood. But that presupposes a false understanding of what the Federal Reserve is and what its function is. So as both of you are pointing out, that's that's <laughs> the, 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 the function of the Federal Reserve. He would go is, to jail. <laughs> well, no, but but. No, no, no. But the point again, I'm not, I'm not, he can't literally do anything. What that would be, that would be threatening legally. What, what, but what he's suggesting. So I don't think he would go to jail. What he's, but what if he's he be, doing. If he started conducting himself like the federal reserve, he would go to jail. 
okay, let me just put that aside for because that's not my point. My, what I'm trying to say is is that that what what he's what he's doing he's creating uh, in the the false interpretation. He's creating a, a, a false consciousness. Uh, in his audience around what the Federal Reserve does and what his relationship as a venture capitalist, as a black capitalist would be in that relationship. So what would it be? What does the Federal Reserve do? It organizes the, the investment and distribution of wealth in this society to assure that it never gets to any centralized uh, dangerous point of redistribution. Mm -hmm. so, what, so what he would in fact be doing is if he did attempt to play the role of a Federal Reserve in the hood, what he would just be doing is micromanaging the exploitation, the abuse, the 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 extraction, the oppression, and then himself benefiting from it. He would then become, in effect, the neo-colonial manager of it. Uh, um, but, you know, uh, but by playing the role he intends to play, analogies aside, he keeps himself out of the threat Diallo is, is, is presenting because he's not going to actually intervene in any process. He is, in, if anything, going to become, as I was alluding to a moment ago, the cog, the face of white capital as he presents himself as some sort of black Federal Reserve of the hood. And but, so which, he'll play his role. He'll make himself a, a whole bunch of money. And the black community that he relates himself to will be far worse off in the end. Listen, which I, I think there's an old Oprah clip when he had some hair and he was talking to shit back in the days. But the same thing with the Federal Reserve is what he basically did during the Rodney King riots. He said he called the banks. He called the pigs. He put them all on a bus and they took a tour through the hood. And so the white banks started giving him money. I think um, uh, First First Republic was the first one to give them money. He said other people started following suit. And he was managing the money from the white banks to go to whatever black businesses he seemed um, credible. So pretty much that's what he was already doing. That was his goal since 92. Right. Look at all the <clears throat> books that I've been through. But that points to the overall entrepreneurial. I don't, it's, it's like... <clears throat> Entrepreneurial salvation is this, is this what I again I call prosperity politics. That entrepreneurialism is is the solution. Is is and entrepreneurs are, but should be the default leaders. We go from 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 religious reverend doctor and minister to entrepreneur CEO leaders who who are giving these commencement speeches at colleges and giving every one of the students in the audience an LLC. <laughs> and those students who just got a university degree running out of the hall screaming, I'm a business owner because I got an LLC. I mean, so this entrepreneurial cult that has arised in the community, this entrepreneurial solution that, that, the, that will solve everything, these black venture capitalists are really if it's even more insidious because there is a time where black people, just like in the record industry, just like in the sports industry, black artists, black athletes started being like, yo, you know, these white agencies, these white record companies, the, these white production companies and studios are taking black talent and, and exploiting us. Both of y'all lost our hip hop card, by the way. Are taking our Both talent and exploiting us. And so now mm -hmm. we got the Don Kinging, the black record mobile, and now the black financiers coming in like, yeah, I'm one of y'all. So come with me. I'm a black uh, a franchise owner. I'm a, I, I own black franchises, black owned. And don't understand that these black people who replace the white parasites, the white exploiters, and the black people come and, and, and say, well, now this is Black capitalists, you know, it's a black man in the Brook Brothers suit. And they are seducing us to go through the exact same cycle that we started to have some level of awakening of. And they're seducing us back into the system using black people in the same positions in acting the exact same behaviors as their white predecessors. 
So I made a line that John Hope been running this game since '92. Look all the bullshit I've been through, and only one person in the chat caught it. Y'all too didn't. So that means y'all. I of course caught it. I just didn't think it was worthy of interrupting Diallo and 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 uh, okay, acknowledging. Okay. Of course, of course. Uh, uh, so you know. So Diallo, yeah. what Diallo was trying to ex- he was trying to explain that John Hope has this idea of conscious capitalism, where he makes a quote that racism does exist. But we've got to save our own lives. We have to get over it and get to it. So black and brown America have to speak the language of empowerment. So what I think we should do is we should let the chat vote between the two after we go over this person and then um, Tyler Perry, who's the most ignorant and who's the most danger to black community between. So you John raised Hope that on your Instagram. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, that's who, hateful. Most, I'm just saying. Like who, brother, who's, who's the who, who's the most ignorant? Brother, who, who's the most ignorant? And who's the I most dangerous? There. I was once where you are, my brother. That's come okay. up out, come raise above. <laughs> you the one say we got to sanction the people. That's what you told me. I learned that. From that you. That's a purifying <laughs> word. Purify, sanction. <laughs> that's that's a kind word. To say. <laughs> But yeah, Tyler Perry. It, now we got our own studio. We we got our own studio. We got Black Union Busters. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I was just trying to uh, pull this up um, from your Instagram, um, where you're asking who is who is worse. Um, oh, but by the way, we do have our guest here. In a second. So yeah, we'll yeah. come back in just a second and get to our guests and, and, and give a better introduction. I wasn't sure what was happening, but OK, good. Um, uh, so this is what you were asking here between John Hope Bryant and, and, and Tyler Perry. But I guess this is what we'll do. This is what I would suggest we do. Let's table this since we do have our guests showing up bright and early West Coast time. Let's table the, the, the response. Let's sort of tease out. We will come back after this interview or this discussion with our next guest and and come back to who is who is more of a danger, Tyler Perry uh, uh, careful, or John Jared, O'Brien. We're never going to get Myth of Black Buying Power, the movie. <laughs> no, we, we, we got a direct in the road. We got but direct, we do we get the direct. book launch. But we do get the book launch Saturday night, July 1st, 7 p.m. Eastern. So you have plenty of time to get the book. The copies are coming out now. We don't. We hold don't up, need Tyler Perry. Up. We don't need Tyler Perry. Hold we got up. this brother coming up next, so we don't need Tyler Perry. Hold up! I don't know why you're talking over my promo. So I'm just let me let me just let me just let me just, let me just he just let me just solo out here for a second. The book is out. Get this your is copy. God. This is God. And you come hear through, my voice. And they come through. <laughs> God says, <laughs> "Ye of a little faith, don't buy that book." I can't even get a goddamn oh, promo. I can't even get a goddamn promo. This is terrible. Anyway, we're going to talk about talk over the promo. I know. You know what I'm saying? Give Y'all will be on be on problem. point. My bad, dog. No. Look, but look, let's do this. We're going to take a quick break. Come back, and we're going to go where I know me and Diallo haven't been in a minute. We're going to have we're going to go to the barber shop and have some barber shop <laughs> conversations right here on Earn Your Liberation. Real quick, you got to earn your liberation. <laughs> All right, joining us right now. What's up, brother? I have actually been barbershop conversations. I have been, I actually have been subscribed for a minute. Oh, thank you. Checking out the content and I appreciate it. So, so what I don't have, admittedly, and I'm just realizing is a proper bio and introduction for you as an individual. Uh-huh. Oh, no big deal. No big so, deal. So I'm gonna let you do that yourself. Silent, and then we're gonna talk about uh uh Wait, silentherofilms.com and the new film you have coming out, which is right up Diallo's alley and going to get us all in a bunch of trouble. But go ahead. I did not tell you I am a change man. Executively (laughs) produced by Diallo Kenyatta himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a change man. Y'all won't let me grow. Like Bobby Schmurder. Me and Bobby Schmurder. I'm saying y'all can't. Lead the introduction over promos. is casting expersions. Me and Bobby Schmurder have changed our ways. 
Mm. <laughs> brother, I thought I know you came here looking at. I don't know. We're not helping you. Oh, no, I'm I, sorry, I, man. I, I, I watch the show often, so I, I genuinely appreciate y'all intellectual satires, man, and uh, it's it's greatly appreciated. You know, it, it's funny as as I was coming on because I'm doing a piece right now on Tupac. If Tupac would have heard this show at 18, he never would have became Tupac. You know what I mean? He would have he would have had he would have been bold enough and confident enough to be the man that he truly was. You know, and uh, it's uh, it, it's refreshing uh, to hear bold men speak. You know, it it I'm in a world where it's financial, it's financially incent you incentivize to be mediocre intellectually. You know, uh, not to ask questions, uh, the five W's and uh, the question religion, the question uh, why do we believe? Uh, it's it's beautiful. You know, because um, as opposed to leaning on violence, I'm a man that that like, well, what's the source? Where do I get the the, uh, the artifacts from? The primary sources, you know, I'm one of these guys, you know. And uh, so, but it's real refreshing, honestly, whether I agree or disagree with y'all, it's, it's, it's just like every bar comes with like uh, research. Every bar comes with like, like uh like, like you've done the work and honestly i swear i'm not capping you know i'm i'm a very uh independent man so i, I don't really live a life for likes or comments or anything like that but honestly i swear to y'all like it's if tupac would have heard this show in 1991 he would still be alive for sure clip that yo clip that Clip that, clip that. Appreciate that. That's oh, that's real bars. Real we, I appreciate that. No, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, and 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 that said, as I said already, um, being underprepared, uh, uh, <laughs> after all those compliments, uh -huh. we are underprepared uh, in terms of of you as an individual having sure, a proper sure. bio and introduction. So so again, take a moment yeah. and introduce yourself thank and you. and. Uh, again, I will say uh, when you hit me up, I was like, I'm already a, a subscriber to Barbershop <laughs> Conversation, so I appreciate it. But anyway, yeah. say say more, please. Thank you, uh, Frederick Hawthorne. Simple, uh, in in terms of my professional career, um, Emmy nominated. Uh, I've written three books. I've done seven, eight movies, uh, documentary based. Um, I've produced my own work. I've never taken any money from no studio. Um, been with the same woman 23 years, two kids, um, interracial, two kids, in, in case that matters to some people. Because, uh, you know, you got this online, you got this, uh, you're not black if you don't. <laughs> Anyways, wow. And I love that conversation. So uh, more than willing to have that. Um, oh boy, we just we just, just heard from Umar man. and the Snow Bunnies. Yeah. Oh, you know, yeah. we just you know, like yeah. oh boy, you yeah. made another hair stand up on <laughs> Umar's head. Yeah, Umar, Umar with two baby mamas, right? Umar with two baby mamas. Yeah, well, two wives too. Now, let's two be wives. fair. Yeah, but his daughters don't live with him. Wait, he got two wives. Yeah, he married two women. Yeah, Umar. He, well, to, yeah, do you I, I, Geech, why are you shaking your head? I, I, I get that. I ain't get that he, memory. He, then why was he yeah. searching wife resumes? That this That's is what, what the result was. This it resulted in but, him but getting. We had a, but the, but right, those two wives don't include his baby mamas. I don't. <laughs> I don't that know. part might be true. I don't know. Honestly, I don't. I know. just my had bad. to get that spy. I had to check my wife's files to make sure it wasn't no. She didn't update her resume for Uma. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> Uh, Everybody trying to upgrade. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> right, everybody. Oh, you know, that's what they say. You follow the manosphere. The woman's always looking for her next level up. You just a way station. You just a stepping stone. You know how these women do these. I'm sorry, how these females are. <laughs> I follow the manosphere. <laughs> Come on, this guy here. I got to shake this gynocentric <laughs> title they put on me. I'm right. to shake. Man, oh my god. I get, it. I get it. Yeah. I get it. Okay, I get let's it. get back. Let's okay. Let's yeah, and that's simply ahead, it, man. That's simply it, man. You know, and uh <laughs> life's great, man. And uh this film came nine wives came out last year. Was it last year? No, 2021. And it's been oh, doing wow. well, man. It's been all over the world. It's been all over the world. We've won over 
15 film festivals. It's I've sold thousands of screenings and uh, it's done. I, in terms of research, I, I spent the day with John Ali, uh, flew to Chicago. I flew to Chicago. I interviewed a bunch of people. Uh, Khalil Ali um, interviewed uh, uh, Claude. I'm drawing a blank on his name right now. But the, uh, you know, the C-SPAN interview, I reached out after I watched the C-SPAN interview of Elijah Muhammad. I'm drawing a blank on his name. He's from the South. He's a professor also. Hmm. Uh, uh, so it's well research based 40 to 50 primary sources as it pertains to the information uh, I stand by every syllable uh, I, I stand by every word that was said you know uh, the, um, the, the location and the woman that goes into the hospital may not have been the scene may not have actually happened but the words or I stand by every every word that that woman said. Should we can we, we, can we give an overview? So what, that I was gonna say let's run the doing. let's run the um can we run the promo? We can yeah, run the, oh, yeah, the, run the it, trailer and, and then maybe some and people then, might be in the dark. And yeah, yeah. I have to commend you, brother. Oh, thank I mean, you, this bro. this is the role. We of, know of Diallo going to commend you. Yeah, we know Diallo going to commend you. <laughs> for, the, know for, for the cinematography, I didn't oh, say my nothing. Goodness <laughs> gracious. The lighting, yeah, we, brother. Yeah, the yeah, boy. Also, 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 shout out to Brianna, Brianna Michelle. That was a she. She did well. So thank you. You, you cast Ooh. a good one. So. Mm-hmm. Here we go with the name. We drop. know you Fall know back. it, but we hold know on. We know every can I play this? Person. Giving a shot. I'm we just giving a shout out. Famous, I'm giving, every I'm giving famous a person out. in the country, you know him. Okay, fine. Watch That's this. Watch, I, watch how I mute. Watch how I mute him, and I mute the. Uh, all right, play the clip, man. Ain't got no time for this. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Good evening, messenger. Allah. You convinced us that you were the last messenger. How many other bastard children do you have? Yes. Uh, oh, here you go. My bad, my bad. So yeah, so tell us about nine wives and yeah. and Geechee's friend that's in there that he don't properly you know name drop and and <laughs> um I, I was born in Harlem and raised in South Central LA so uh I've al- I've always I've forever had an affinity for Malcolm X and as you get older j- just just being a man Malcolm X words. <laughs> tend to resonate with you as you get older and older and older, especially for me. And uh, so I was born in I was born in the same hospital where he was pronounced dead and Presbyterian. So I've always had an affinity for him. And then as you get older, you you have this duality in you. Right. Uh, you, when you walk uh, Lenox Avenue, when you walk Amsterdam Avenue, you have an appreciation for the presence of the nation of Islam uh, per se. And then as you get older, you learn more information. And then you got to find that balance of truth versus status quo. And then you elevate more and then you become angry. And then you get a little bit old and you realize you know how to articulate the truth. Because if I would have did this film at 31, 32, it would have been more anger, you know, as opposed to truth. It would have been more more visceral, you know, so. Uh, I, I did this film at about 40. I started the process at about 40. I'm 45 now. And I'm, I'm glad that I waited. I'm really glad that I waited because um, it's fact-based. And, and I had the finances. At 40, I had the finances to spend a day with John Ali, you know, to pay for these interviews, to, to fly to Miami, you know, and, and uh, learn who Captain Sam was. Uh, uh, so it's, it's just a splendid man. And I am 100. It, it, it is without question. The Nation of Islam murdered Malcolm X at this point, man. It, it, it is without question. And I have and I have the information to prove. So John Ali, I spent the day with John Ali and uh, 
he, he had a quote that I haven't released the audio yet. Uh, he had a quote and he said, so he got real comfortable with me. Um, uh, at about after the interview, we went to, we went to dinner lunch. Cause he only, he still only eats one meal a day, ironically, and, and smoke cigarettes, which is that duality we speak of, right? You're not supposed to smoke cigarettes as, uh, he still follows Elijah Muhammad at 92 at the time he was. And, uh, he lived in a single room apartment. Uh, he's been in that same for about 50 years. He's lived in that one room. The unit is so old that the bed folds up into the wall. Same mattress, uh, smells like smoke, and uh, no retirement plan. He's living off of the white man, SSI. Um, and, um, and we got to dinner. And uh, he told me, he got comfortable. And he said, you know what? Malcolm never was going to make it. And I said, hmm. And, and he looked at me and he said he wasn't going to make it. And it was, it was in that moment. I have the audio, but uh, it, we're in a restaurant, so you hear a lot of stuff going on in the background. So I just got to put the captions down. But, uh, but without question. Um, and, and this is why it's so important that platforms like yours, platforms like mine, now apply pressure to Louis Farrakhan uh, because on that eight hour drive or however long it took him to drive from Boston, New Jersey, he had a decision to make and he chose the wrong one. And, uh, um, and he's a hero in our community and it disgusts me. It, it, it literally disgusts me that this man can uh, be unhonorable, non-honorable, um talk about the the ascension of black people when he has hidden families uh, had multiple babies with captain sam's daughter um hit him only proclaims his family with khadijah um it's it's, it's just flat out disgusting and muhammad ali's wife khalil ali said the nation of islam is a sex cult and i didn't understand it when she was it's funny. Um, I have so many interviews and I have to go rewatch them now because when someone gives me another information, information, I have to connect the dots and I'm sitting there like, wow, wow. Elijah Muhammad had sex with all these little girls. Um, Louis Farrakhan has families and kids that he's never mentioned publicly. And then when he died, they're going to say those are his wives and he's 90 years old and we still haven't seen a family picture. And, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it, 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 it it's the bockery in the most at the highest form. You know, I, I, I was watching you guys earlier talk about religion and that's one of the easiest ways to, to trick humans is to say in God we trust. You know, Umar, Umar Johnson does it with the pro-blackness and Elijah Muhammad and Louis Farrakhan has done it with in Allah we trust. And uh, th that's one of the quickest way to fool black people. And it, it's been working since slavery. And now it works in 2023 and Louis Farrakhan is still presented as a hero. And Nine Wives will uh, encourage you to do the research uh, I would encourage everybody to start at the 60 minute interview uh, when he admittedly admitted that he was a part. He had a, <laughs> and he also knew Elijah Muhammad was sleeping with little girls. He admitted it. And we're still like, <clears throat> uh, yeah, yeah. I, what's funny is, let, let me. Let me get a couple. Of, let me get a couple questions off for you. For, I know Diallo, this your this your this your topic, but real quick, um, so one of the things that we talked about before on here is like how people who produce movies, they might have the actors in, engage in some type of study. So I guess the first question is like, I know you said you have a lot of sources, but what was some of the things that you might have directed Brianna to study or read before she, you know, develop her character? Um, that's the first question. And the second question is like, 
what is your why for this film? Like, do you have ties to the Nation of Islam or, or Islam mm-hmm. in general? Was there a history with it? But but those two questions. Yeah, I here's a beautiful thing about Brianna. She's open with this, and this is why what gravitated me towards her. She's a victim of sexual assault. And I knew that going over the script and and we did some historical stuff with her. But the one thing that grabbed me outside of her organic beauty, obviously, right? And um, that was a part, that was the play too, like the red dress, you know what I mean? And her putting over that, that that's really a cape. When, when she puts the veil back on, when she puts the scarf back on, that's a cape. You know, like she becomes her own superhero, you know, and and owns her own superpowers. You know, when you watch, when you guys rewatch the film, you'll see that. Uh, but her being vulnerable in that state, I I, I knew it would be important. Uh, we did the research on the, um, on Elijah Muhammad. We've done the research on. I asked her to to learn as much as she can about Malcolm X, and we've had questions and discussions and how should we say this. Uh, how would a woman say this uh, versus because uh, a, a, a man speaks with as less as minimal adjectives as possible, probably more so than a woman. And so that was our conversation. Uh, and no, I've never been a part of the Nation of Islam. I've never subscribed to them. I pretended for such a long time uh, to accept them. Uh, you know, I grew up in Harlem and grew up in South Central. So these are two of the three epic centers, right? You got Chicago, you got Detroit, maybe, and you have Harlem and you have L.A. So I, I've been a pretender for a long time, and I I, I didn't have I didn't have the uh, uh I I didn't have the je ne sais quoi to to articulate myself in my late 20s and early 30s you know but i'm glad because i because the finances came in my 30s you know and so now i was able to fund it myself you know all my films are funded by me you know um i just turned down seven hundred fifty thousand dollars for a movie entitled muhammad you know uh it was a million dollar budget millions of dollars multiple million dollar budget and uh I, i've talked about this on my Instagram and I talked about it on my platform. I had the money to do the Muhammad film. I had the money and uh, from someone else, from another source. And, and, and I thought that would be unjust. I really thought that would be unjust to the work that I've put in. And I politely said, no. Can it, something stood out. I, I, I wanted to speak about your, the accusations you've leveled against the nation. Yes. And how and everything you've said about the nation, mm-hmm. they have confessed to mm-hmm. publicly on record, not mm-hmm. just taking credit for Malcolm that Farrakhan said in a speech. And I'm like, if you don't believe then I said, is Farrakhan a liar? I would ask people when I say the nation killed Malcolm because he took credit for it. He said the nation dealt with Malcolm like a nation is nation supposed does. to deal with a traitor. He also justified and victim blamed. When it came to the predation of adult men against underage girls Mm -hmm. on record, on tape. Mm -hmm. And I haven't heard a retraction of that, that he said that men go after their daughters and younger women because of the wives get old, fat, ugly and rude. Mm -hmm. So it's not as though you're saying anything that the nation hasn't at one point in its existence written down or stated on video. But I did one. Something stood out to me that I couldn't get around the whole time I was watching mm-hmm. is that the protagonist of the film was wearing a crucifix mm-hmm. around yeah. her neck. Right. Mm-hmm. And I have to be honest with you, it kind of gave off a little dueling banjo energy. Like, uh-huh. are we trying to replace one reactionary cult or one reactionary uh, 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 religion with another? Mm-hmm. So and I think that that would also greatly uh di- distract among other things distract from the 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 very important message of the film uh-huh. the fact that the the protagonist as she um engages with this uh muslim cult leader uh-huh. wearing a a diamond crucifix uh-huh. I, I i i wanted that 
to show separation. I, I, I genuinely use that to show separation. Like, I am no longer part of the Nation of Islam. I can honestly see how you can see it as like, uh, ha, 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 I'm back in status quo, I'm free. But I wanted, I wanted the separation. I genuinely wanted the separation. I couldn't, I, I, I thought that if Orthodox Muslim, I, I didn't think that would have been strong enough, you know. Um, I wanted something strong. I wanted something visual. I wanted something that uh, people associated with as freedom. Um, um, but wouldn't and, that have been Malcolm X, who was an Orthodox Muslim and represented yeah. liberation? Yeah, but um, right. yeah, dueling banjos. You know, that's a lateral move. That's not an elevation. Going yeah. from from an Islamic cult faction to mainstream Islam mm -hmm. to mainstream Christianity. How is any of that liberation or freedom for an African? I, but I again, mean, as an atheist, as an anti-religionist, but even as an anti-religionist, uh, uh, Diallo, Malcolm represents that challenge. That's the point that always is, is sticks for me. Malcolm, as an Orthodox Muslim, was as much of a revolutionary as any one of us, as certainly me, as certainly most atheists. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are other approaches to even other religions that have manifested in in tremendously high levels of revolutionary activity so obviously he was much more that's not that's not the i'm not doubting that but that's my point would be that that his orthodox islam didn't prevent him from being much more and, because... and may could be argued to have helped him get there so that's all i'm saying that's all i'm saying but i get i'm glad you pointed out that contradiction of the cross being there and that juxtaposition is discomforting no question but you know, I just want to throw that out there, Diallo. I mean, I hear you and largely agree, yeah. but I think we can't deny, it, especially if we're talking about the Nation of Islam, Malcolm X, and and uh, 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 Elijah Muhammad. We can't. Dis I can't. I think we cannot discount Malcolm's continued engagement with Islam. That's all. And I wanted to. Uh, I think we can because Malcolm literally said, "We leave your religion in the closet." He but he didn't say stop. Be, he didn't. But he, he didn't tell Muslims to stop being Muslim. That, that was that was just at meetings and and connection to the community. That had nothing to do with his personal stuff. He's he still yes, struggling. right. But he as understood Skip Kuhn, that, as that, Jackie, as right. And they really saw like right. Listen, what I find with a lot of religiously oriented revolutionaries, they're really bad at religion. They have to. They have to your, literally. Your, your, they your, literally your have idea to be of the religion. Nope. Your okay. idea of the religion. Nope, their well, idea interpretation of the religion. Of idea. Their interpretation. I don't go, I lean not to mine own understanding. <laughs> and I go to their scriptures and what they claim to believe, and I tell them how they're violating their own edicts. We just sat here and read how to be an appropriate slave. Any slave that raises his hand to a master is violating the will of Allah. All right, we'll come back to that. Allah. I just wanted so, to put that point in but, there. Let's let the brother finish his point uh, and, you and, gotta and stop and playing discussion. patty cake with these colonial religions but and and i think that i wanted to disrespect him i wanted to disrespect him being elijah muhammad in the most highest form and i thought a woman over him with a cross in a red dress strong vibrant um I thought that was the most disrespectful thing I could do. Um, uh, and I think I, I think it, it came across because I used as less words as possible. Uh, she was firm. She was strong. Uh, it was a high level of concentration. And I really, I, I, I think the cross dangling over a comatose Elijah Muhammad um, it's powerful. I think it's, I, 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 I think it, and I think it reaches the masses. Uh, and I can understand the argument, uh, as it pertains to your, your religion. Um, Malcolm X did say we need to stop singing and start swinging. And the last ballot, he said, he also said, uh, leave your religion at home. That was also in regards to us, to the unification of black people, right. As it pertains to 
uh, our succinct movement. Um, I don't, I think when we talk about religion, religion and the words and, and how you see it is, uh, has merit. Religion also can be an asset to how to eat. Uh, religion can also be an asset to a rule brick of life in accordance to humanity. And I think that holds value as well. Um, it, it also can be a means of control. You know, you, like you got to ask your question. You got to ask yourself, is religion a weapon or a tool? Um, and that is totally up to the individual. And that's why we get to the root. You know, uh, I don't subscribe to a church. I don't subscribe. I, I, I definitely subscribe to humanity. Um, I subscribe. I believe that there is a God. Um, I don't pay tithes to one man. I pay tithes to my community. Um, I volunteer 20 hours a week. Uh, the past six months, I volunteer 20 hours a week to my community. That's tithes. Um, uh, financially, uh, so on and so forth. So I think from, from your, uh, s straightforward approach. Yeah. Uh, you can see it as like, it's holding black people back. It's this, it's also, it, it also tells us not to eat, not to eat bottom dwellers. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it also tells us, you know, to treat people with respect, you know? Thou shalt not kill. There are good, there are good elements to it as well. So, so, uh, so when you're mining out the truth, I think that when people created religion and or rewrote the Bible and or rewrote the Quran and so on and so forth, there is a combination of the two. And, and, and I think that when you uh when you are succinct with with yourself, when with oneself you have the ability to, to mine it out, you know, so, and, and so, go ahead. so you, so, so you, uh, you kind of mentioned or acknowledged that you intended to be kind of heavy handed or you intended to be disrespectful to, uh, Elijah Muhammad or, or, or even NOI. So right. I guess my question is again, like, I want to flesh more out the why and then two, what is your response to the idea of like, how could you give a balanced critique? Like, could it be neutral? Was it like anti this? Like, like what is your response to the, you know, because I assume you're going to get a lot of backlash from NOI and NOI oh, I, sympathizers I or supporters. All the time. But, but between those two questions, like still kind of flesh out the why, like, I needed to make this film because I wanted to do this. Am I trying to on, uh, vindicate Malcolm? Is it some experience or whatever? Like, what what is it? Yeah, like if I would have if I would have wrote that in my early thirties, it wouldn't have been a cross. It would have been you motherfucking molester, you piece of crap, you this, you that. But I I I, I think the cinematography is fucking amazing. Like the contrast of the black skin, the cross. Oh man, I I I, I think it's Splendid to me. Um, it wasn't to vindic. It's funny. The idea started out like, man, I want the next generation because I'm not concerned with this generation, right? I, I I think our YouTube channels will be will have more value a hundred years from now. Um, it, it starts off like a story about Malcolm X, right? And then it, it 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 lands into the truth because the film started off as a conversation between Elijah Muhammad and um, Malcolm X. I had I had casted it already. And then I said, nah, I think I just want the people to know who Elijah Muhammad is. And when you understand who Elijah Muhammad is, you understand the foundation of the circumstances of everyone in the nation of Islam. Why best went to UCR and shot at Khalid Muhammad, why Farrakhan drove to uh, Moss 25, you know, why Khalid Muhammad was uh, kicked out of the nation of Islam when he said the same thing years in and years out, 
You know what I mean? Why the Nation of Islam took millions of dollars for the AIDS research? Why are they in, why are they making millions of dollars in our prisons? So I think it 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 went it went from this big to this big because now it it talked more about the foundation and who this man is, who the creator is, as opposed to a member of the Nation of Islam. Right so, so, so the the, yeah, the, yeah. the, the, right. pro, the pro, no, I'm saying the prophecy. Since we talk about prophecy, there's a prophecy in the chat that Diallo and Jared about to go off. So, oh, I don't. No, no, no. I'm gonna let y'all have this, man, because uh, I'm glad that that we're, that we're getting this media. I, I I do think that the the uh, the message articulated is is um is compromised by the crucifix. Uh -huh. And centering that because it is very prominent mm -hmm. and it does, um, aside from all the ad hominem attacks that I'm seeing come against you that oh. I don't agree with, but um, the merits of the film, like uh -huh. the, the, the historical uh, accuracy, I don't uh -huh. think there was any condemnation leveled. And I don't believe in neutrality. When you do have a cult that has plagued our community for decades mm -hmm. and that so many black people have just plain misunderstanding mm -hmm. or you say you want to be as disrespectful as possible to, to, to the, uh, to the messenger. And for most people in this community where I live to suggest he's anything less than divine is the ultimate disrespect. So it, it's like, you don't really have to go that far to disrespect him because just by saying he was not the prophet of Muhammad or just for me to say, according to, their own literature, the right. Nation of Islam is a cult. People, you know, disrespect, but I, I do have to say that um, it is a accurate piece and it, I do appreciate it, but I do think that, that it takes a lot away from suggesting that Christianity could be a viable alternative or Christianity mm -hmm. is really disrespectful of um, the, the nation of Islam, when the nation of Islam has had strong ties with the Christian establishment. Well, in where, where, where yeah. it, it has very strong and it was born out of Christianity. I mean, Dr. John Henry Clark said Elijah Muhammad ain't nothing but a failed Baptist preacher. Baptist preacher. <laughs> and and he and, and if you look at Islam, it is Christianity, black Southern Christianity, you know, with with a uh, uh, Islamic cultist gloss on it. So I'll, I'll leave it alone, though. But that just. Really, I think that I guess nitpicking, if I had to say anything about uh, it, I, maybe that uh -huh. is an assertion of how good the film is, uh -huh. saying that, you know, this is, was my my main critique on it. Uh -huh. But I do think it is a major, major critique, uh -huh. um, you know, and it, and it just made me it made it stand out. So, and I'm just kind of like. I get it. I get it. I. I I wonder, I wonder how Jared feels, but also you, I want you to respond to this too. But so there's a point that that you talk about, or let's talk about that the nation preys on vulnerable men and women. So it could be yeah. people who are downtrodden away. It could have been ex uh, the state has captured them. Um, they might be suffering from assault or whatever these things. So one, I. I would like to know how accurate Jared feel that is, but also then why, why do you feel that, or did you feel like you accomplished your goal by kind of like exposing NOI also along with, with this person? Is, is it like a testament to your, you know, acknowledgement or disdain of yeah. the sect in, in general, but go ahead. Yeah. It's like the nation of Islam is like a placebo welfare for black men. You know, it's, it, it offers, it, it tells you life is going to be better. You're going to become a better man. And when you join them, there's no resources. There's no jobs. You still have, whether you join the nation of Islam or not, you still have to go get a job with the white man. You still got to, it doesn't get your baby mama off welfare. You still have to do the work in this civilization. And in, in accordance with, with Malcolm X, see, see that's the problem. Malcolm El Haj Malik El Shabazz didn't live long enough. If El Haj Malik El Shabazz would have lived long enough, Malcolm X would be distant in terms of his affiliation and the strength 
of that 12 years he had with the Nation of Islam. And Elijah Muhammad knew that. And because we only got one year of him, uh, if that long, you know, um, that's that's the pain, you know, that's the pain that uh, that I sit with on, in my quiet moments. You get what I'm saying? And uh, because Malcolm X wasn't Umar Johnson. Malcolm X wasn't, I mean, I mean, excuse me, uh, El Haj Malik El Shabazz wasn't Malcolm X and this and that. He, he, he said, I, they would be, con I'm just, I'm just gonna make it shorter. I can say the quote, but they were my brothers over there, but they're my devils in America. So, um, he, that, that man didn't live long enough, you know, to, like, like, like I said, Tupac would have been, man. It would have been cool to be an intellectual rapper in 1990, 1991. Um, uh, oh, man, it's, 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 we, we, we don't grow old. N not a lot of us grow old, you know, and um, it's, it's awful, man. It, it, it's, well, you know, he would outgrew, he would outgrew. Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King would have joined him. Martin Luther King would have been El Haj Malik El Shabazz lieutenant. You get what I'm saying? Like, like, like. But I mean, yes. I appreciate when you said you didn't really make this film for the current community mm -hmm. because um, I think his name is uh, James Kunstler talked about the fallacy of previous investment. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's kind of funny, like with 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 Donald Trump. Um, as Donald Trump gets exposed, they find that the more Donald Trump is exposed, his his crimes, his corruption, his predations, they find researchers find social scientists find that his supporters become more entrenched. Mm. And I'm finding that with many of these cults and cult figures, not just Elijah Muhammad, Doctor York. The Shechem or Shechem. I don't know how familiar you are. I talk a lot about mm -hmm. cults in the I black know, community yeah. and cults don't cultivate that mm -hmm. when their leaders get exposed, it strengthens because people have to conclude either I'm a goddamn fool or somebody's trying to tear down my leader. Somebody's trying to tear down my savior. Somebody's trying to tear down my and these people are all corrupt mm -hmm. and these people are. I've literally shared direct quote, quotes of ministers. I say something about the minister and people call me a lie. And then I share the minister saying exactly what I said on video. And then people say I misinterpret. <laughs> so this, this fallacy of previous investment that saying, hey, I've put so much energy, so much emotion, so much money of my time into this thing that to invalidate that thing, you're invalidating me as a person. To attack that thing, you're attacking me. But as you make this, what I call pr pretty, it's, it's, it's respectable. Like I said, the crucifix takes a lot away, mm -hmm. but the cults and the existing black reactionary status quo, they're also trying to capture the youth. They're also promoting their, 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 their delusions, their myths, their, and, and trying to expand and recruit people into their cult. Do you think the facts and the truth and the realities of these organizations and these cults is, be, is, is, uh, is being outpaced or keeping pace with the perpetuation of the lies and the myths and the, and the recruitment? See, uh, 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 America is a summary of subcultures and I, I i think the um the conflict is is within subculture like black people is a subculture of america uh and then you got the nation of islam is a subculture of black culture which is and i think that as we get older before people join because when we were first born we were just american right when you get about six, you realize you're black. I don't know, whatever age that is. And then you you get about nine and then, you know, 
you, they indoctrinate you with the with the I have a dream speech or if not before and and then you silently conform to this subculture. So I think our conversations, our artistry, our platforms can infiltrate the joining of these subcultures, you know. And I, I think the more the more work that is done, the more successful will be. So you, you have to hit them before they subconsciously join these subcultures, you know. Um, I guarantee you 70% of black people have never seen Martin Luther King. I've led my people into a burning building. I, I guarantee you they've never seen that. I guarantee you they didn't know Rosa Parks subscribed to Malcolm X speech. Uh, she was at the Ballad of the Bullet speech in Detroit. You know, people don't know that. People don't know that the the owner of Little Caesars took care of Rosa Parks, you know, uh, in, in, in her mature years. You know, black people don't know this. And um, I think when we know the truth, we'll dial back and then hopefully dive into in, into the nuclear source, you know. Uh, I, I, I I commend mm -hmm. that optimism, mm -hmm. but simply having the truth is 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 woefully and sorely inadequate. Just having the facts on your side does not guarantee you come anywhere near a win. And I also have to say that where you say when you find out you're black. Um, we find out we're black in the womb, you know, even epigeneticists say racism. I mean, with the low birth rate, infant, moral and maternal black folks are black from the womb before mm -hmm. we're even born. You know, when we before we even fuse, I mean, uh, in the eggs, the contaminated eggs and the contaminated semen and the contaminated breast milk. It, it, I wish we had our children had till six or seven to be exposed I, to racism. And they've also found that children as young as three and two years old begin to recognize and act according to the racial hierarchy, white children and black children. I apologize for omitting I the word social. I, 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 I apologize for, I'm talking about like, like this social blackness, you, you know what I mean? Like, like, uh, like you have to tell a story of oppression. Uh, uh, that's more commendable. It, it's more commendable to be a drug dealer. I'm talking about the, the social, construct of being black as opposed to just being a human like or, or 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 living in america with black skin you know there are uh, i understand where you're coming from and and all that is true i was more like the 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 social building blocks of being black you know um like you know so um science i'm i'm, I'm not i'm not here to to disagree or dispute science, but there's a social construct like like black culture. Anton Daniels says this a lot. Black culture is trash. I want to give him credit for that quote, and I I couldn't agree with him more. You know the fact that I, I see I'm on this Tupac project right now, so that's why so so that's where my consciousness is. So if I bring him up too many times, that, that, that that's where I'm at. Tupac says in episode four of Dear Mama, you guys got to watch this at the 37th minute mark. He said, uh, it was to protect me. This gangster image wasn't a facade. It, not, it, it, it was a facade, yes, but it was also to protect me. That's what I was talking about, like the black culture, how. So, yes. Yeah, so, I, so, so a couple of things, because I know we could go all day with all of these different threads, and I know we have to start pointing to an end here in a, in a minute, but, but I did just want to say, uh, um, First, I have to say, in terms of the Dear Mama series, I need to invite you and others to watch our series with Daruba Bin Wahad, reflecting on the all the failures of that series. Uh -huh. So that would be, uh, let me invite you to that, yeah. uh, including some of the criticism we got, which we hosted here, which which I think uh, um, history has proven to be even more wrong than when they first brought it to our platform. But that said, uh, it's all here. I would encourage you to check that out and others. Um, but I... I just want to say, because there's been a lot in the chat, uh, you know, so first of all, this is why when I do I Mix What I Like episodes, I always set the chat to be for subscribers of at least 60 days so that oh, we have man. some, so so that we have some purchase, 
pun uh-huh. intended in terms right. of people's commitment to the platform and, and how they engage the platform. EYL, we open it up to everybody, and I think that's reflective in the in the in the quality of the chat. So to 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 those who are critical um, and those who support what we're doing on this show and in this discussion and beyond, I want to encourage people to continue. Um. I want to encourage people to to continue to to adhere to my challenge that if you disagree with what you see in these BPM streets, take it to your own and build a critique off of it with substantive, principled, accurate reference to what we've done. Mm -hmm. The point of of the project is intended to be to to uh, uh, intervene and become part of the black radical public sphere of conversation. So, and to create a new one, really. So, so if you have something to say, say it, uh, um, don't, and, and, and don't just put it in the comments. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like lay out a critique, just tag us in it. If you have, write a blog post, write an essay, do a, do a, whatever. And, and, and go beyond some of the name calling that I see in, in the chat. Uh, uh, the anonymous name calling, which which whether it's of me or my comrades or our guest, I think is 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 inappropriate to the project, especially if you're not making it plain on your end. So so do that. The brother here produces work and content, whether we like it, agree with it. It's been criticized even here this morning uh, as is supported. But the point is, he's left us a body of text. And, and I'm not saying make a movie. I'm not saying write a book. I'm saying there are any number of ways that people can respond uh, with substance uh, in today's day and age. A simple, you know, a, 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 some, a simple essay. So that I just want to encourage that. Um, the only other thing that I would want to add in, in, for my own sort of concluding thoughts this morning is that I, I do appreciate what you've done here, even with where, again, we might end up disagreeing. Because I do think, particularly around the issue of Malcolm's assassination, the the continued uh, uh, relationship uh, with the black community and politics of the Nation of Islam, Minister Farrakhan's role in all of that, I do think there needs to be room for principled critique of, of past and present activity. And there can't be these sacred cows that can't be criticized. The Nation of Islam, Minister Farrakhan himself and his emissaries have routine access and ample invitation, not only to this platform, but to so many others. And yet their critics are never given access or or made part of that discussion. And I do think we have to find a way to have that occur, uh, uh, just as we've been saying about Umar Johnson and others, and then also recognize some of the differences in where those criticisms are. There are some people who have created cottage industries just being critical of these folks, but who themselves don't have any radical political agenda themselves. I think we're a little bit different in this space, at least endeavor to be. And that's where at least uh, uh, I'd like to see us uh, playing a role. So that said, I appreciate you coming through and uh, that will be that I'll I'll leave it there for me uh, this morning. I'll let you all uh, uh, go from there, but, but I appreciate it. Look forward to having more uh, time to build with you. And thanks, Thank thanks you. for reaching out. And please come on my platform. I, I would love to have Anytime. you on my platform, man. Anytime. Anytime. Yeah, it will be fun. It will be fun. You know, was that it? Was I really the last one? I, I thought yeah, I was yeah. going first to be last, but I, Endless. you know, listen. You, it seemed like every you, time I try to say something. Oh, <laughs> so Diallo you, is the J, really Diallo is the JT like of our, our podcast. He's the JT and you, you Tony, the closer. So. Does Diallo really think he hasn't had enough time this morning? I've anyway. had more than my share of time, I suppose. <laughs> but but I, I just think ahead. a lot of this, like, well, what you said about black culture is trash, you know, <laughs> and, and I would be curious, what culture do you suggest we adopt? Humanity truth um uh there's no such thing as humanity culture you're going family. to invent a culture wait, 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 wait. Of- uh let me get there let me get there um family culture is at the dinner table you all do- cultures have family let me finish, structures let me, finish, let me finish let me finish let me finish uh culture is derived at your dinner table at five o'clock when you're having dinner uh principles i i say this all the time uh, you don't build culture outside your home. Um, and I think I, I, I know um, you may, for the sake of this conversation, we're having, we're using the term culture, but you can say principles, 
um, um, the, your own, the 10 commandments of life. I don't know what other words you want me to use, but culture sounds like a safe word on this platform right now in this moment. Um, but it's at your dinner table uh, uh, with your nuclear family. So uh, how can you say black culture is trash when you had, when, because, when, when you, exactly. as, according to your definition of culture, for every individual black family, that's a whole different culture unto itself. And, no. and, and you're saying every black dinner table is trash. No, no. See, you're, you're, you're cleverly, uh, <laughs> minimizing, exactly minimizing what you what said. I said. No, 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 no. You're just a very intelligent person and, and, and you know how to, and, 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 and you know how to use words. Uh, what I am saying is this. They've convinced us what a black culture is. And I said, put your right hand over your heart, ready, begin. And then it navigates to the I have a dream speech. And then it navigates to you ain't black if you don't know who this favorite rapper is. Uh, uh, the 10 top drug dealers will get movie deals before uh, the man who's been in your community married. The Huxaboos who's been in your, your community. They've they've. They've changed the DNA. And the fact that you and you and you and I are having this conversation is proof that they've scientifically gone into the lab and changed the DNA. And I, I, I genuinely believe, genuinely believe wholeheartedly until we as, as black people understand the value of family nuclear family man sees forever in the woman that he procreates with uh until you're going through the trials and tribulations of staying married uh having kids uh providing and protecting until we value that until that by in until we can do that by any means necessary the word culture as you just described will have power and 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 it's not about culture like like it's 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 just about being a family like because if if you raise a proper family if i can knock on your door and you've been my neighbor for 25 years and you've done the right thing you've worked uh um then there's a principle there there's a there's a parallel that we have you understand, and I, I, I think that real quick, man, real quick, real quick, real quick. I'm sorry. Yeah, I went to go get a coconut. Yes, and I came back, and it sounds like Tommy Sotomayor and uh, Jesse Pete P- lead us in conversation right now. I don't know how we got here, so I might have missed a couple. I think I missed a few. <laughs> oh, and I don't man. know what the hell is in this coconut, but it, I, I don't know if. I rubbed the coconut and got what uh, is we Thomas doing? Omar out here. I don't know how this happened, but uh, no, I. I <laughs> but we've like, like like this culture, like like brother, Chicago. It, it, it's, brother, it's, yes. I'm very, I'm very appreciative mm-hmm. of your stance against the nation, mm-hmm. and <laughs> as we understand what we're against, we also have to have some type of cogent understanding of what we're for Mm because i'm against a lot of shit Mm -hmm. (laughs) i oppose and i'm anti i am the hater and i am a proud hater but i'm very clear on what i'm for so if you're going to go and say you're making media for an entire generation and you're trying to dispel certain myths and dislodge certain delusions Mm -hmm. that exist within our community Mm -hmm. As I said early on, it seems kind of like dueling banjos. Mm -hmm. And when I say dueling banjos, you have the exact same instruments that are trying to outdo each other. Mm -hmm. So if we abandon the reactionary cults only to come, because there was another brother on here a few weeks ago. My the guy they 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 tried to get, I don't know if you you watch the show, they tried to get rid of me (laughs) and replace me. And they had a brother who was attacking economic scammers. And he was saying that these people out here scamming Back to my and his solution to the scam was for black people to embrace the mainstream economic system 
which is a which is the biggest scam of all. He wanted us to abandon low level community level scams and embrace the global scam of of of, of global capitalism and get into the stock market and all of that as a solution. So you take a a fringe cult and you direct people towards a mainstream religion. So it's to me it's leveling up and it's the mainstream religion indoctrination that makes us vulnerable to being picked off by these various cult leaders so all i i would encourage is as you are very clear on what you are against and what you are opposed i would encourage you to cultivate what you support because family values and just one man one woman that is not the problem nor the solution for african people and much of what you describe as black culture is actually white predation, white culture, Western culture that black people are adopting. So you cannot say black culture is trash and every solution you prescribe to us comes out of Western culture, which is the original, bigger level, higher level, infinity trash. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times I understand we get into what we're against, but we have to understand what we're for and you have to offer viable, well sussed out answers and right. solutions for the people as you are telling them this ain't the way to go you don't want to miss be a further misdirection right and and what you're arguing against is actually what you're for i uh, you have a sweater on you have headphones on i'm pretty sure you work for a living you earn something for a living you protect and provide for your family uh, you're not you didn't choose to go grow a garden I understand you know how to plant. You understand pottery. You're not on six acres of land in Africa. You're not in six lands. You're not, you don't have six acres in the Bahamas. So what you're suggesting that I understand and what I am fighting for this white economic system, you're actually benefiting from. So I, 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 I genuinely believe that uh, um, it's, to to call it white is Wait, uh, oh man wow it is uh <laughs> is um is this you you have to find a way to be successful in this in this <laughs> system and um and when you can build the family being successful in this system and it becomes generational you've done your job like not not I, I don't see i don't hear cattle running in no four of these mics oh I my god my whole, whole, okay all right um I, I, I actually i actually do got i actually do got cattle i do i got cattle outside actually for real but you probably can't hear them but they are out there. um but yeah <laughs> No, but I, not, I can't yeah. imagine what that has to do with anything. <laughs> no, but um, so yeah. just just real quick, just for uh, oh man, I don't honestly, got, I don't got, know how to like do a, this. We got we got a couple more topics, so we got we can. Uh, I know yeah. we do it. We don't have a lot of time, but I don't know how else to 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 do this, and I'm certainly not gifted enough to do this is, in a succinct Thanks. way. But but culture to me, just simply put, is is broadly speaking, it's just it's just a worldview, how you interpret and how you make make sense of your surroundings. What I understand black people to be doing in many ways, as as, as, as other groups of people, are there there are practice they are they and we are attempting to practice consciously or not a uh, 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 remnants what uh, an underpinning of of a broad-based african cultural worldview that has been and continues to be negatively impacted by a, co a colonial process one that is constantly looking to interfere so so when even as the un has written when you interfere with the cultural process of a community that is slow motion genocide so when we hear things like black culture is deformed and black culture is this, what well we the the only way I can the, the best way I can think of interpreting and under, assessing that and understanding that is to understand the context in which black people find themselves and the hostility in which black people continue to find themselves as black people continue to try to practice what is an unconscious 
cultural performance that is being negatively impacted by a group of people with power over the cultural production, over societal development, over the lives materially and otherwise of these people and creating the negative, the negative. So, so just in terms of when you talk about Pac, very quick, hip hop emanates out of a pan-African, African world experience concretized within empire. Pac represented someone attached to cultural remnants coming from Africa and other radical traditions, impacted negatively by a colonial process here in the United States, managed by a corporate structure and a hip hop uh, musical industry and a society. That negative interaction is the contradiction that we saw in him and that we see in ourselves. So to dismiss this as a black cultural deformity, to suggest that, that we benefit in ways <laughs> from society uh, that that is oppressing us and extracting from us and 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 uh, uh, ultimately oppressing us and many more is missing the point. So it's not to say that we would have to be dealing with livestock and living on some expansive plot of land to be practicing our culture. It is to say that we are attempting to practice cultural tendencies and traditions in a hostile context that doesn't afford for that uh, um, traditional or other forms of manifestation of those cultural tendencies and practices. So I don't know. There's a better way I'm sure it, it could be done. Diallo is itching to get in there and do it himself. No. But I just think that that kind of combative context has to be understood if we're going to negatively assess uh, uh, Black culture. We, should have to, we would have to understand what culture is and what is Blackness and how all of it... Regardless is. of what we're doing, uh, we're, but, we're still exchanging the same currencies. So that's what I'm saying. Like, like we have like no, no matter what what point we argue, we're not oh, we're not going to create our own currencies. And that's why I say the dinner table is where you create your own currency. Right. Okay. But if we're gonna get, but a current, let's just say, okay, currency is an outpost of 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 a government of a, of a of a national policy. So to get to that point where we would be producing our own currencies, we would have to have a revolution. To get a revolution, no, we would have to hold on. Oh, oh, absolutely. Right. Hold on a second. You would to get to that revolutionary state. You have to have a political consciousness that evolves. Uh, uh, um, and emerges that that to, to get there, we can't rest on the solutions provided to us by the very people creating the problem, culturally, materially, or otherwise. So capitalism doesn't solve capitalism. Western cultural values don't solve cultural imperialism and the and the, the struggles of the colonized who suffer it. So it it is not that we can just work within the established order to find our way to, to, to sanctity. And that's why I think when Diallo points out your use of the cross in that video, this is where that contradiction becomes manifest. So you're 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 beginning with with a, a righteous, justifiable point of critique, but yeah. you're pointing for us as a solution right back to another version of the very same problems that got us here in the first place. Yeah. Him him. You, me, Diallo, uh, paying mortgage is the same thing as the cross. Like, 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 where, where, I, I, I you, I mean, this conversation go on and on. I'd like, and uh, on. I, I, I just want to publicly go on the record that I'm uh -huh. really resentful that uh -huh. Dr. Ball is just absolutely right in making so much sense and dealing with this better than I would, uh -huh. and that that makes me mad. Being an alpha male myself. Uh -huh. I don't like having to acknowledge that another male <laughs> pause is going harder than me. Pause. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> but thank you so much, Dr. Ball, because you know, for helping my pressure stay down. Because for 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 articulating what I think you dealt with it better than I was about to. So thank you very much for helping the brother and helping me too at the same time. Because I was about to say some things I didn't have to say. So and let me just say that. Thank you, Dr. Ball. We're all active participants. So that's why I'm saying you got to find your and it has to be generational. Your success has to, and it starts at the dinner table. I, there is there is hundreds of thousands of acres of uncharted land in America. How much of oh it do, do the America. four of us own? 
All right, so, so the ball signal here. is still oh, up. The ball, so that's why I send up the ball signal. And and y'all and send what up the ball book? signal. That's and why y'all thought what I you, was playing. We need a ball he about, signal. He about to out, he about to out, he about to out, about to out, about to out, out poke the, the post Coast, out. Send up the ball signal in L.A. So let me it's just, so here's the best <laughs> way. Look, I found our outro. I think I found our outro okay, for today. Brother, you welcome back, and we'll happily come on your platform and continue I would this. love we, for you. We, please, we, please. But, but I think the best way yeah, to, to, to segue mark. out is to remember what Malcolm said. When we sit at the dinner table, that does not make us a diner. We... <laughs> We have to get to the point where we are controlling the processes that produce what ends up on that dinner table. And that's not that's the point. I'm but, but please don't allow this discussion to sully that film. Get the film out. Thank you, dog. The Go link is in the show description. The Go film, check it out. The film and the, 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 the dialogue articulated in the film is accurate. I stand by the, the dialogue and the discussion articulated in the film. I don't. I can say the cinematography is beautiful, uh, but the dialogue. Please do not allow our disagreements to sully this this work of art because I I do <laughs> think that it is it is a work of art and it is a work of progressive positive propaganda. It's anti propaganda propaganda because I I do really think these type of works are necessary. Um, the academics on what that back up the what's articulated in this film. Are, are there. So if you've been following the academics and you understand the facts, the historical and ideological facts, and the film will help reinforce that. Mm -hmm. If you are not familiar with the facts and you're still caught up in this delusion about the minister, the prophet and, and the messenger and, and the NOI being a positive force in the black community, this film, the dialogue in this film will be a good springboard for you to go in and reassess and critique and dissect the truth about the various cults, black leaders and ideologies that plague our communities. So I right still on. want well, to stay you. on it. I enjoyed so, the film. I appreciate you making the film and the other differences. We can still have oh, very strong, we'll keep on very rigid. We, we, we keep on struggling. Yeah. But we're going to yeah. focus on where we come together, the embrace. Right on. All right, brother. Thanks a lot, man. Right. Take, good, take good care. We'll catch you next time. And you uh, we'll be back here in a second here on more EYL. Don't go anywhere. You got to earn your liberation. All right, good people. Don't meet your heroes. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, I mean, we. <laughs> Don't meet your heroes. <laughs> Lord. So, so, people in the chat, thank y'all for flying EYL. Uh, the two pilots, Jared and um, his co-pilot Diallo, and the, we had some bumpy rides. It was a rough ride, but I think I think we landed the plane safe. I don't know if we got to our destination, but none of y'all dead, so you can't complain. And we ain't give you no damn money back. But thank you again for flying EYL. <laughs> Shouts out to the two pilots. <laughs> Turbulent. And don't leave any trash in the seats. Throw it out on your way out. <laughs> You, I just yeah, and somebody it. was smoking weed in the bathroom. Somebody was smoking weed in the bathroom. I smell the weed. If you give me a somebody little somebody was bag, smoking weed in we'll, the bathroom. <laughs> we will let it go. Somebody was smoking in the cockpit too. Apparently. I'm glad you but, went into academic mode. I'm glad you went into teacher mode. I don't know. I, I honestly, I don't. It, it, that could have went another way. It could have. <laughs> it could have. I don't. You know. But um, so anyway, look, look, uh, look. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Uh, hey, Howard came, Howard came from shooting the first. Susie came, he came and shoot. <laughs> he was shooting the whole time. Him and Jupiter, they did. I actually, I they, think they it looked you like know, a Zion, the, Zion Williamson. And, um... But I think Diallo makes a really good point. And I think that, again, whatever we think of, of the interview or the film itself, I think that, that it's, it's, again, without a Hollywood budget, they're doing good work. I mean, this is this is not... You, we got to give some respect here, a little bit here, like like especially any of us who've ever attempted any sort of media production. Uh, you got to give them uh, some respect there. The the and, and people who are you know you got acting you know you got actors doing their thing. You know what I mean? Uh, you know so. I, I I applaud them for that. And we're always telling people you know if they're hating on Hollywood, do their own film. Uh, so here he is doing it, and you know I, I mean you know anyway. Um, I guess. 
All right. So, okay. So we, we left it at the teaser of who's worse, John Hope Bryant or Tyler Perry. Um, we talked a little bit about Bryant. There is uh, in the show description, uh, 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 the, the, what I promised earlier already, the uh, discussion we had a, a little while ago about Bryant, a more in-depth look at him if you want to, you know, investigate that later. Um, but there was also this, uh, didn't we have, what were we supposed to show from Perry? No, I forgot what we were doing here. Um, the Karen Hunter clip. Oh, Perry, Can you, Karen, Karen, that? Uh, oh my God. Um, yeah, now on. this is, I, I was, I, I used pull, to have hope. Thank you, thank you. I used to have hope that I would get invited back to Karen Hunter's show. Uh, but I, I, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, especially after this, um, I didn't even. I mean, watch the, la the lady actually just lying on it. She's just lying. Um, she's lying all through the clip. So, so what I also have in the show description already is a link to the work uh, that I was a co-author of about uh, Tyler Perry mm -hmm. and the Man Tam Manifesto, uh, and the number one. Well, we'll come back to it because because this this already. They are perfectly in line with the Man Tan Manifesto, but anyway, let's let's check this. Strike out. impact. This, I y'all man, y'all doing too much. I'm hurt. Wait, I can't. What, keep, what happened? What happened? Y'all keep hitting me with this mess, man. I can't. Oh no, this I is, ain't even recovered from the last interview, and y'all throwing this mess up here. Yeah, this is yeah, it's it's, it's a rough Friday a morning. Performer and now as a producer. Well, it doesn't affect me because I'm not WGA or or DGA, and um. It's really been interesting for me. I and I'm sorry, just in case anybody missed, Karen Hunter is asking, and I'm not sure who who is the guest here. She's, She's an actress and a writer. Okay, T Tanya Pinkins, who's an actress and a writer, and they're asking about. She's asked, "How is the writer strike, the current writer affecting. strike, affecting her?" Right. Yeah, I probably have a most politically incorrect um, opinion about these things. Of course, especially after having come from. Uh, working at Tyler Perry Studios. So wait, wait, pause for a second. So Tyler Perry is not affected by this. That's correct. <laughs> wait, hold on. I'm sorry. It's not funny, but it's kind of a little bit funny. So, so Tyler Perry is just, just oh, this is this could be, this could be like an actual an actual game changer. Really? This oh, wait a minute. It is I'm, going to change the game. And let me tell oh, you. Oh, wow. What, okay. Talk talk to us. Before I even go into my opinions, I'm going to tell you this. At Tyler Perry Studios, first of all, it's it's so beautiful. And it's so us. It's colorful. The rooms are beautiful. They're not sterile like they're sticking you in an institution when you're on a lot. Unless you're a star and you get money in a budget to decorate your room. It's all beautiful. And... I say Tyler Perry has brought more black people out of poverty than any of these unions have. Okay. <laughs> so let's just tell the truth. Um, Tyler Perry does 22 episodes in nine days. Uh, Hollywood does one episode in nine days. Capitalism is going to be looking over there going, uh, uh, they doing what? And you want this much time? Well, can you do it at that budget? Do you know what I'm saying? That's just the nature of capitalism. Capitalism don't care about people. And so, um, yeah, we did 20, I did 12 episodes in four days. They shoot, <laughs> they shoot 125 pages a day. Now, as a, as a trained actress, you've been in everything. You were with so wait a minute. The argument is unions are not better than Tyler Perry because Tyler Perry has them working more then unions have them working and therefore right. they'll she get She literally more described sweatshop conditions. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought she was She saying. literally described sweatshop conditions <laughs> and applauding Tyler Perry for being brave enough to violate labor Plus, laws, to, labor to, codes, and, and, and labor standards. So she probably, is she going to say no? He got 10 <laughs> year olds in there working too to teach these little kids and earn their liberation She's like, early. yeah, we come in and accomplish more in five hours than studios compass in a week. Oh my God! All right, go the, ahead. Gucci, listen, the, the the way she the the way she says capitalism doesn't care about people is just beyond her. And then Tyler Perry actually two days ago there was a report that he has uh, yielded to the guys and the um the labor laws. I I got that uh Baltimore Sun article in the chat. 
So the 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 idea that he's not even impacted, like Meet the Browns, House of Pain, all those writers was beefing with Tyler Perry for a long time because he wasn't paying them. He fired them when he, when they tried to ask for more money. So I don't know what the the hell this damn lady talk about unless the facilities Tyler... are nice. You see, it's laid out. <laughs> oh, it's so it ain't it. like Hollywood. It's, it's so us. What is this Ooh, velvet? Fish Mooney, right. Jada, and them. <laughs> were, I watched you with Papa Pope. I've watched you on The Walking Dead, the Fear the Walking Dead. You've been in a lot of things right. that people have seen. How does this? How is how is that schedule different for you, a trained act- actress? I loved it. It was the closest you get to live theater. Okay. And here you go. You got to come prepared. You cannot be slacking. You know, Hollywood, you might show up on set and the people got 10 lines and they won't remember, don't know them yet. You coming in here, you got 13 or 30 scenes. And you, when you walk on the set, you're going to start shooting. Okay. The only thing you're going to get moved around is go, the camera's going to be there and the camera's going to be there. And they're shooting with three cameras. So it was terrifying. So Tyler Perry, she said, is better than Hollywood in his production, in the quality of his production. <laughs> he just he's outdoing all of Hollywood. All right. Well, it was exhilarating. And more importantly, they're not holding you and taking up your time. So if you're in, you know, 22 episodes and it takes nine months, maybe you shoot part of three of those months. The rest of the time you're doing nothing. But you can't do anything else because they own you. Okay, Tyler Perry, you get in and out. Those kids who've been doing six episodes, they work four weeks of the year and the rest of the year is theirs and they're making the same money. And listen, I I don't know if y'all know this. Okay. Look at the shades of her glasses. I think Tyler Perry on the other side of that camera coaching her. I think Tyler, okay, see, so, y'all can see Tyler Perry um, her glasses. Your opinion you know, on this uh, strike and how it's going to impact. That's why she took I, them off. Because I'm a, I'm a TV file <laughs> and a movie file. Like I love, I watch everything. And uh, that's my, my vice. How is it going to impact? She well, she you know, she I sort of though. saw TV it coming that DGA file. was going <laughs> to save their own ass. DGA, you know, is not thinking like, you know. Who's DGA for the people? Director skill. So okay. all the so unions there, is, were coming up to strike. DGA is there more that we need? Do we need to watch this whole thing? No. Was there more in here? Oh, no. Okay. Okay. No. 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 So can no, I cut oh. that shit? Out. Well, let me just let me just share again in the in the show description already is a link to, uh, um, uh, all of this. But I would like if we could because to be to if we could just before we move on, um, look at the uh. Oh, my bad. Look at the the damn. Look at the uh, Mantan Manifesto. If we could just be quickly reminded of uh, what it is that is being described here, and I don't mean you know we were we were harsh on Spike Lee before, but this is one area where I think he got he 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 got something right, and in the art in the link below. In the show description beat, is an article. No, no, but I think in this clip he he pre he prefigures Tyler Perry, and then we wow. in in outlining the Mantan Manifesto, and then I and a, and a and a former colleague wrote an article about the Mantan Manifesto a couple of years ago, elaborating upon it and explaining what Tyler Perry actually does, and uh, the, she already the first tenant of the Mantan Manifesto is was represented already uh, in that clip. Dead. My goose was cooked. The cat was in the bag and the bag was in the river. Uh, I like this. You guys have both seen the overnight ratings. They're through the roof. Mazel tov. But in this business, we have to be one, two, three steps ahead. So I brought in Myrna Goldberg. She's the best media consultant in the biz. She's going to help us out. Okay, first of all, I would like to say I love your show. Hmm. It's very courageous. You know, my parents marched in Selma, Alabama with Dr. King. <laughs> Why are you here? Good question. Straight to the point. I like your style. Because of the content of the show, we're going to expect some very spirited reactions. Myrna's here just to plan our strategy, just in case. All right. The best defense is offense. Really? I thought it was the other way around. Exactly. Okay, I think we're on the same page. Now, I've mapped out some strategies that are going to help bolster our position. Which is? Lighten up, man, right? This is about fun, right? 
nice, wholesome fun. Hey, Medea. Bert, break it down for them. Okay, the Mantan Manifesto. Catchy, ain't it? So is syphilis. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Number one. We gainfully employ African Americans in front of and behind the camera. You got to cut. So um, I'll stop it there. You can watch the whole thing if you like uh, and read the article. But that was the point. She lays out the method by which you have blackface representatives of white supremacist, capitalist, imperialist, cultural products. And the first thing you do is you hire black folks. So the first thing the sister says in her defense of Tyler Perry is, he hires black folks. Uh, so it was just a perfect, um, yeah, a perfect demonstration of the Mantan Manifesto and basically everything else that they outlined in that Mantan Manifesto. Uh, I'll just share from quickly from, uh, from the article we wrote. Uh, number one, gainfully uh, employ African-Americans in front of and behind the camera. Let the audience decide, right? We, we get that same kind of argument here. Come on, the, the people like Tyler, um, uh, who are these would-be cultural police? All y'all hating. You just hating. Let this man do his thing. Who determines what is black? We are not saying anything about the entire African-American community. So, you know, don't be, again, the cultural police. Uh, it's simply satire, particularly in terms of his Medea films. Uh, if they don't like it, F them. And then lastly, always smile, wear Kente cloth, refer to Dr. King, and remember this show was created by a non-threatening black male. Um, so basically, you know, Tyler Perry's products fit perfectly within what was described in that film as the Mantan Manifesto, which I think is still an accurate way that the industry approaches presenting blackness. But anyway, go so, ahead. I'll stop. So chat, so, so chat, who y'all got? So who's who's the worst? Who's the most ignorant between John Hope Bryant and Tyler Perry? Both of them are supporters of Cop City. Um, both of them are doing their thing in Atlanta to make sure the police or the pigs uh, have their training facilities. Um, so who y'all got? And Diallo, you're on mute, by the way. Diallo, you're on mute. You asking us or the audience? Well, the audience too, but I mean, I, I think both of y'all's uh, uh, critiques or choice would probably help. Which one of y'all think is more most dangerous? I, I think Tyler Perry. Because um, Why? even though um, movers and shakers and financiers do their work behind the scenes, I think that the propagandists not only make us vulnerable to the machinations of the financiers, of the men behind the curtains, they also distort the, what's appropriate to respond. So the distortion of the people's understanding uh, renders the, the people or the masses incapable of, of comprehending, let alone challenging such conditions. So the propagandist, the well-known, the celebrity is, is, is more dangerous because they are the ones who make it hard for us to identify and target the, the power shaker. So I could see how people would say hope is more because he has maybe he has more influence, has been around longer and is doing things at a much higher level, what makes us most vulnerable or, or, or even put us in a position where we literally celebrate our own exploitation, where we have someone who is literally employing some of the most insidious labor tactics, employing and, and producing some of the most anti-Black media and propaganda, and, and instead of condemning or rejecting, we celebrate and embrace. So I got to go with Tyler Perry. So somebody just said, Fred, <laughs> y'all stupid. What, what, you, <laughs> what you got, Jerry? Well, Who you going so, with? Uh, so first of all, Fred, Fred technically doesn't qualify because the Mantan Manifesto really only applies to uh, white owned, distributed and funded product. I think it is in targeted audience. And when the white community is the target audience is when you really need the Mantan Manifesto. Uh, and all of Tyler Perry's content is targeting the white community, as as was explained and we cited in that article by the Lionsgate film executive who used to put out his films. Um, so, and I get and I and I and I think I agree with Diallo on this. I it, I kept thinking like, who's worse, the one actually 
and even Hope isn't really doing this, but who's worse, the one performing the damage or the one preventing you from recognizing who's performing the damage? Um, so I, you know, it, it, it's it's a neck and neck thing. And, and but I would have to give it to, to Tyler Perry because John Hope Franklin ultimately is the economic version of Tyler Perry's media product. He is the economic equivalent. Neither of them own or control they perform a duty for their white betters, so to speak. Uh, and Tyler Perry just has such much more of a massive and negative impact. Um, uh, and his work, whether people are aware of it or not, his work does form some of that initial layer of, um, I don't know, that protective layer of empire that we have to fight through every time we want to do something. Uh, so I'd probably have to go with him as well. Who you got, so Geechee? On that TikTok, I, just, I mean, I'm definitely going what with is Tyler this? Perry because of... What is this? But I'm, I, no, this guy, he's a comedian, who, and the lady was uh, talking about Cop City, and they was like, well, why don't you make Tyler Perry the face for Cop City so we can get black people to support it? But uh, I, I would say Tyler bad. Perry, oh, okay. too. <laughs> no, I would say Tyler Perry, too, because of the propaganda. And then I do think he has a hell of a weight in, in the space. And I think the, the culture has decided that he's the victor over, uh, what's that lady's name? Oprah. Spike. So oh, that BV oh, had, oh. no, Oprah. Yeah, well, Spike too. Mm. He already, he, he trashed Spike. But Oprah, when they had that beef, people kind of sided with him over Oprah because he, he, she stood up, he stood up to Oprah. So definitely mm -hmm. him, he has a ability to just make moves and you know got the money and he does do the thing that you just said man tan manifesto same thing nard do nard tell me all the time he hired black women um so you know for him to be able to hire all these people and to have a sycophant like that actress who was just on karen's show like he's definitely doing more damage i mean he, even though earn your leisure will will say everybody should follow john hope like i still don't think he has the reach that tyler perry has with his movies and the CBS, and then he and he can pretty much he sell an idea that he making his independent movies. I remember I had a, a, a conversation with um one of my uh, homeboys. He live in a uh, in L.A. and we was talking about who could make a better version of um the Spook, and he was like, "Well, can Tyler Perry do it?" And I was like, "That's not that's not that's not a good idea." No, I remember. <laughs> I, I again, all due respect, but when M.K. Asante Junior. Or, or no, no. Um, that's not, not, it's not MK Asante Jr. It's, um, well, it's MK Asante, right? Yeah. Just yeah, MK MK Asante, Asante, yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. When MK Asante told me that, you know, don't be too harsh on him. Cause one, you know, Tyler Perry might one day make the Asada Shakur bi biopic. Don't do, it. don't do it. And I was like, yeah. I, I, Black I'm, culture I'm, is trash. <laughs> 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 can we bring that brother back so I can no. apologize? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, I'm playing. Let me stop. Go, go to this other comedian because that was a comedic <laughs> statement. So go to the other comedian clip I just said. <sighs> oh, man. Oh, man. The Atlanta Police Foundation is building a massive urban warfare training facility with bomb testings, tear gas explosions, a shooting range. Didn't people march to defund the police? It looked like yes, they refunded they the police. They did. Activists have dubbed this development Cop City. An 85 acre, 90 million gonna get a dollar copyright complex, strike. including a shooting range. But oh, definitely. A mock city that includes apartments, a school, even a bar. So this is basically like six flags for the police. Yes, it's a playground. You can't call it a playground. She got a community oh, movement right. builder shirt on. But I had a dream about unlike, how they could make this project Unlike more Kamal. Unlike Kamal. Mother we name it after Martin Luther King. Doesn't matter. Tyler Perry presents the training facility. The name doesn't change. The impact. <laughs> I tell you, you don't watch no Tyler Perry. <laughs> <laughs> no, hey, but like so he stole Tyler my joke. Wait a minute. <laughs> he stole my joke. For years I've been saying when they when they start the trains to the black Auschwitz again, they're gonna have us watching Tyler Perry films to pacify yeah, us. He stole my joke. Give me yeah, my he watched BP he watched BPM. But no, so Tyler Perry already had he already had a luncheon. He already had a luncheon for um You muted yourself. You muted oh, that was... now you unmuted yourself. Okay. 
No, I said Tyler Perry had a luncheon for the cops, so he already kind of supportive of the cops anyway in Atlanta. And him and Dickens came in and they was showing their adoration for the cops and all this love and whatever. That's the other link I said. But um, so yeah, I, I definitely I guess everybody went with um Tyler Perry. Nobody put John Hope. So John Hope still got hope. No, anyway. that's not how that works. Still- it's not because John Hope is better. <laughs> it's just they both have the same agenda. It's just who's more effective at execution. There you go. But it's all, I mean, the black community. So, so I take I so I take I take it you against his uh being the um Federal Reserves then. So y'all hating on his capital. I, I, I don't care. No, that's just empty rhetoric. <laughs> that's just empty rhetoric. You know, and you say buzzwords like that. They throw out buzzwords, uh, Federal Reserve Bank, our own bank, you know, our own secret societies remember they were pushing that back in the day we gonna have our own black illuminati it's a whole <laughs> bunch of nothing <laughs> anyway just in case you hey. missed it thanks to all the super <laughs> chats uh nelson mercer which one of you knows how to make a youtube poll that's a good question <laughs> apparently none of us not no me not no um me. welcome i am sp fresh Nelson Mercer again, thank you. Uh, the way that can be explained is not the true way. Got to be scientific. Thank you, Diallo. Gigan, dollar ninety nine. Now we hear the true barber. <laughs> that was not my intent. I was trying to. I was Obie, throwing right. underhanded softballs for him to hit it out the park. Man, I wanted dude to win. Yeah, it it, uh, yeah, and and I I mean. You know, years ago, I mean, Hiram in his comment made the point I made years ago to myself as a as a as a wannabe journalist at one point that I didn't want every time I ended up interviewing an artist, I'd be disappointed. Uh, and I lost interest very quick because either they're just there to sell a product or they're there to sell themselves as not being threatening. And not often enough do they do they represent the politics or they represent a politics that they can't sub- substantively discuss beyond the lyric or the image yes, or whatever yeah. it's it's so sometimes yeah i, w- I was like oh man shut everybody up said dribble. iced tea shut, shut, up, up, shut up and film <laughs> <laughs> shut up and film <laughs> this mom, this <laughs> hey but oh, no. you know I, I, anyway. I did i did listen to i did listen to that whole interview from karen hunter and she did make your point, Jerry, about AI. So that lady started talking about AI and how. What's my point about gonna, AI? Just they're gonna regurgitate shit that's already out there. It's not like they're gonna have anything new or any like level of critique. They're just gonna have the same dumb nonsense that are out there. It's just gonna be brought to you. So she pretty much said that AI is just gonna be like a sophisticated plagiarizing of a uh, content that's already out there. But. Well, okay, but let me just, if you don't mind, let me just speak to Karen real quick, Karen Hunter. <laughs> Please, I don't know if you ever read the first one, but please, no. I need to promo and, you know, I'm happy to come back on. The second edition's out. I'll send you a copy. Don't let these fools get me canceled yet again from another <laughs> potential way to promote my book. These fools, though. So these two been, fools. No, 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 no. You've been canceled. <laughs> Listen, That's I've been why in the, the barbershop like this because I'm really pointing at them. Uh, I've been in the barbershops. They say they when I go in the barbershop to get my lineup. See, y'all don't go to barbershops no more. They say don't come in here on that Jared shit. They even got a phrase for you. Don't come in. That's here on that why Jared the symbol shit. looks oh, like sick. that because I'm pointing at you too. I'm like it's them. It's them. Yeah. My, anyway. my, Jared, my my line got pushed back because of you. You know, I start talking that wow. Jared shit, they push my line back. You, so yeah, you might be in trouble. You better, yeah, be, be careful. See, hey, see, that's why, yeah. man, hey, the Geechee Hive, the, the, the free Geechee movement, y'all see, Geechee is a bad person. Y'all trying to help him, and you see how he talk. Reckless. It's self. always, I try to tell them, do y'all love they get mad at us? It's <laughs> right. always the quiet ones that are the real problem. He's mad reckless. <laughs> Listen, I'm not the one that started Jesse Lee Peterson and Tommy Sotomayor conversation. I went to get a damn coconut and come back and y'all talking about some of the craziest shit. Like, how, the f- how turned, do y'all get there? 
Because Diallo said it said it right. He tried to set the dude up, and dude went to the right real fast. It did, like before we knew it, we was I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> the water started rising. Next thing I know, Man. I'm chest deep. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> wait a minute. Listen. I'm gonna blame his wife. I, 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 hey, Ricky, I don't know. We, we still got, but Nas, but Nas, we still got to get the Claudia Jones. Learning something deep from their teachers, and that's all we needed. <laughs> listen, <laughs> hey, listen, I understand. Because sometimes I be on the air and stuff. I be on my radio show, and I be like, on the drive home, like, damn. I wonder, like, I'd be scared to come home because my wife will be standing there. Were you telling people I be? What you talking about? So, do got to go home? <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> I understand, brother. I understand. You got to keep he he values family and marriage, and dude got to keep peace in his home. He can't be here kicking it with us and then go home and get you know cold casserole. Because this is a scary thing when you leave that television. You leave like, that baby, radio studio and your wife is calling before radio. you even get to the car. Right. He go she home. already it's gonna calling. Be, it's gonna hardly be any raisins in his potato salad. He get on here and talk too black. <laughs> oh, that's hey. <laughs> so, so I understand. See? He got to say some things. He got to send yeah. out some signals. The, the, he's, he's. I'm just the, theorizing. The dude got to keep peace. The at chat home. The, the, no, he didn't you know, say if not for my wife, <laughs> hey, if not for my wife, I'd be on here saying some shit. I some wild shit. So. I, I sometimes chat ain't fooled by the because I, say, cause I oh, gotta man. I gotta go to my wife to keep peace at home. That's why I speculate. Oh you know, man, this sounds like if a Diallo. This sounds, sounds like a, this sounds like a Diallo comment. That sounds like a Diallo comment. Anthony and yeah. Diallo, y'all brothers or something? That's some Diallo shit. Some Diallo <laughs> shit oh man, that was hilarious. <laughs> so. I understand, brother. Let me just say. So that's why watching, he had to hit the black black culture is trash. Yeah, he had to say something because he was talking black and and and, yeah, he and said going that? hard. Yeah, you know. Damn, she he, he called y'all trash Asian. when I was going. No, no, she's Asian apparently. So, so it's a it's a um, it's a it's a it's a it's a Chappelle situation for you, Diallo. That's what it is. Well, you you the Chappelle fan? No, no, no. I'm saying no, no, no. I am. I defended Chappelle on a very specific point, and I'm still right about that. But I did also say, and I gave you credit, Diallo, when he walked out there with Elon Musk and did that whole thing. I was like, I knew it. Nah, I say, didn't man. I say I was a secular prophet? There you go, the secular prophet. By the way, who did the logo for the Rational Radicals? That shit is dope. Who I made that. that. I made so why don't you make one for us? You got me up here putting earn your. I made the ball the signal text. too, but I'm saying you ain't make it. You just came up with it. I mean, you got to make it. That rational radical joint is okay, fire. I'm, I was I'm like, I'm sick. trying to be. I'm trying to be down. I was watching. Okay. The show is dope, by the way. I like. I, I like your show solo. I'm a fan of the, the the brother Diallo show, but I do like. I like the the Josephus conversations. I like. Oh, that Diallo shit. Unchained. Uncensored. Bro, Diallo un uncensored, right? <laughs> Django Unchained. Yeah, that's the only time I get to talk and really express myself without people trying to bring me down and and hurt my self esteem. Like like the fake, the bad Christian, the bad religious, the the poor, the poorly religious. <laughs> that's terrible. Listen, listen. Are we gonna transition from we gonna transition from dirty ass celebrities to dirty ass air before we leave? Oh, we had more. Oh, I, I actually I have a I have a, go ahead, a doctor's go. appointment. I got an uh -oh. eye appointment to go check my eyesight. What the smoke got in your eye or something? John Coltrane. You don't smoke here. John Coltrane. Wow. It's here, in Chicago. Ain't y'all close to Canada too? Uh huh. Well, yeah, but latitude said, well, and longitude. To... We a little, we right. a little, yeah, we a little, we a little too <laughs> far west. But all right. Well, uh, I mean. Go ahead. We can either do it. We can either or or save it for next week and come back with a recap. It's up to you. I don't really care. I'm good. I appreciate this. Thanks to the remixers who came through today. Please like, share, subscribe, support the channel in any way that you can, and uh, materially join the channels. Help us out at Patreon, or you can uh, simply like, share, and subscribe and help immaterially. We 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 good for all of that. 
and thank you all for 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 your support. Uh, however, it shows up. Well, next Friday and, I might have glasses. See, y'all proving y'all proving to do right. See, that's funny. I might show up here one day without glasses. Right. Y'all, y'all, y'all. Oh yeah, okay. Let's capital. trade out and give me that baritone voice. I can sit. Up, hey, brothers and sisters, <laughs> you give me that bass voice and some glasses. <laughs> All right, fine. And you <laughs> and you <laughs> give me some of that personality. And you know what? I'll take a little. I, I take. A, never mind. Let me let me stop. Let me stop. Let me just stop. Give me I some appreciate of them you, Dion. Four hundred dollar AirPods. Yeah, man, that freedom that scholar academia money, is money. Nice. That money. That freedom. Wait, wait, it's wait, not. Oh, it's not wait, academia money. money. Hold on, hold on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't give Morgan. Don't you dare give Morgan credit for these. It. This came from the good white folk <laughs> money. This is white folk money right here. Wait, what? Morgan didn't pay for these. What's, Morgan what's can't that? afford no AirPods. Morgan don't pay me enough for no AirPods. I'm just what's saying. That what's that movie? What's that movie with Lakeith? <laughs> what's that movie with Lakeith Stanfield when they was they was ragging on each other, telling each other compliments? That's what y'all seem like right now. Oh, oh yeah. uh, Boots Riley. Uh, sorry yeah, to bother I, you. That's right. Sorry to bother. That's right. You. That's what I thought y'all. I thought y'all was skitting just now. Boots I love your used sweater. And your beaded <laughs> chain. What did, what was it? What did you call your necklace last night? The other night? Plastic bead. Plastic bead. You know, I I uh iced out plastic out. Flossy. I make these myself. I make I I string these myself. No, that is true, Kevin. No mm -hmm. no doubt. Nobody's confused over here. We know I'm not. I'm not. A, there's no competition. I know he's the voice. I, can I just get any compliment around here? God damn! This chat is like no. It's no compliment. So I'll be here with the glasses and the AirPods next week. All right, so. all right, good people, <laughs> fellas. It's been a pleasure as always. To the chat, thanks to you as well. Peace if you're willing to fight for it. Like Fred Hampton used to say, we'll catch you next time here. Earn your liberation and throughout the BPM platform. All right. Peace. Peace. You got to earn your liberation.